Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the My Town TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite... coverage of today's 63rd district baseball matchup between Greenup of County Musketeers and the Russell Red Devils. I am here with Ryan Parker to bring you all the action. It is a beautiful day here at the ballpark and 
great 84 degrees. Uh, we'll be back here in just a few minutes to give you the starting lineups. I'm Nathan River with Ryan Parker, and this is My Town TV. Trust is something earned, not given. For over 90 years, KFB has built trust in your community. We believe our neighborhood is our responsibility. Through our quality service, innovative products, and local decision making, we are committed to your financial success. Better financials lead to a better life. All with the Better Bank headquartered in Boyd County and serving the Tri-State. KFB, the bank you trust and the community you love. Insurance with a local agent. It's called service. Call me, Mary Boggs State Farm Agent in Ashland today at 606-744-1208. From hand-cut steaks to fall off the bone ribs, Texas Roadhouse has something for everyone. Visit TexasRoadhouse.com or download the Texas Roadhouse mobile app to get on the wait list or place a to-go order online. Fresh baked bread and honey cinnamon butter await at Texas Roadhouse. Order their legendary catering for your next event. Located at 501 Winchester Avenue across from Ashland Town Center Mall, Texas Roadhouse will help you support your local school. back on the campus of Russell High School here in Russell, Kentucky for today's 63rd district matchup between the Greenup County Musketeers and the Russell Red Devils. We've got Ryan Parker here with me and uh, you know we were talking before the game uh, Ryan and I and then the uh, guys other guys here in the booth you know this <laughs> it's kind of a, a different matchup than you've seen up in years with at least with the records coming into this Ryan I think we were talking about it was uh, 5 and 23 up to this point if you when you combine both teams records and you know it's just kind of a different vibe than what you would normally see especially out of the 63rd district well there's no doubt about it uh, Greenup County and Russell both uh, you know young teams you would look at them as this year and uh, you know coming into this game though you know they throw the records out because uh, I mean the district <laughs> matchups are always tough between these two squads and between uh, you know Racel and Lewis County playing down the road tonight as well uh, but all these teams are going to want to win these games uh, these next couple nights yeah, there's always something big about having that district district bragging rights. I'm going to go over the lineups real quick. First for Greenup County, the visiting uh, on the scoreboard. Greenup County will be leading off with number two, Matthew Boggs, who will be playing center field. Second batter will be number 23, Bradley Adkins, who will be catching. Third batter will be number four, Cohen Underwood, playing right field. Cleanup hitter will be number 10, Colin Alexander, playing third base. The fifth hitter will be number 21, Hunter Holbrook, playing left field. Batting sixth is number 12, Gavin Roy, playing first base. Batting seventh will be number 13, Ty Logan, playing second. Batting eighth will be number 11, Casey Gammon, and Casey will be on the mound. Number nine, I'm sorry, then yes, the number nine hitter is number six, Gage Lamarck, who is DHing and not hitting but playing shortstop is Luke Boggs, number three. For the Russell Red Devils, as the uh, anthem has started, leading off will be number six, Kyle Mockus, playing second base. Hitting second will be number one, Elijah Hankins, who's pitching. Number th or batting third is number two, Nick Adams, playing third base. Cleanup hitter is number 23, Jaden Frazier, playing second. 
fifth batter is number 11, Avery Lothel, uh, Lothar, Lothar, playing first base. Sixth batter, number 22, Jared Witt, and he'll be catching. Seventh hitter, number 25, Caden Criswell, playing left field. Number eight, the eighth hitter is number 14, Parker Mitchell, playing center field. And the ninth hitter is number three, Caden Mitchell. So those are your starting lineups. Um, so at that, we will go to our sponsors one more time before this game begins here on My Town TV. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, or a late night snack on the way home, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Free bread. Refuel. Safe, Kentucky. Buckle up and put the phone down. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. And we're back here at Russell High School for this 63rd district tilt between Greenup County and Russell baseball teams. And we are ready to start. Leading off for Greenup County is number two, Matthew Boggs, the center fielder. Boggs stands in, hit, stands in hitting 317 on the year. Uh, hoping to get something started for this green up team uh, on offense here tonight. And the pitch. Fastball up. And Elijah Hankins there on the mound for the Red Devils. Hankins comes in with an excellent uh, stellar, actually, 1.09 earn run average. Another ball up. Looks like another fastball. You know, to get a little deeper into Greenup's and Russell's uh, schedules and records, you know, Greenup coming in at 4-12, and 12, they won their last game against, ooh, just a bit inside, got him on the helmet. And Boggs will take off first base for the first base runner. It looked like another fastball that, just got up and in just a bit much. Had a little arm side run on that. But what I was saying was, you know, Greenup coming in with that 4 and 12 record, they won their last game against Flinning County, but they've lost six of eight. Four of those have been by two or fewer runs. Yeah, both these teams, as we were talking before the game, they've been in games throughout the season, but. Uh... You know, he's trying to learn to win right at this point. Well, even with uh, with Russell, with the record in 3-14, and 14, they've lost the last two out of three, but there's a pitch right down the middle. Strike one. Seven of those losses have been between two or – has had been two or fewer runs. So both these teams are looking for clawing and scratching 
to kind of get up. There's a pick to first. Runner's back in time. Hinkins paying a lot of attention to that runner over there. A lot. Elijah brings a fastball. Bradley Adkins in there batting for the Musketeers right now. Bradley's a excellent athlete for Greenup County. Uh, had a really good basketball season this year and uh, hitting 300 so far. Another throw to first. You know, Boggs getting a pretty good lead off first over there. Uh, he's only stole two bases this year, though. He's two for two on uh, stolen bases and attempts. Hankins comes set. And plate word. Ball's up. Can't tell if he's just missing with his fastball or if that uh, his breaking ball, he doesn't quite have a feel for it yet. A lot of times they look the same when they're coming in high like that. The wind is blowing left to right today. Here's a pitch. Here's a shot, line shot to shortstop. He catches it on the line and doubles off Boggs at first base for a double play. Nice play there by Kyle Mokus. Mokus. Almost caught him a little bit in no man's land. Caught it right at his shoelaces. That was a great read. A lot of kids may freeze on that and let that ball hit in front. He was aggressive, came and got it. That allowed him to get a good strike throw over to first base for the out. Here's the pitch to Cohen Underwood, the right fielder. Yeah, Cohen Underwood, I mean, he's coming into the season. You consider him the senior leader of these uh, Musketeers. Uh, you know, he's, he's, uh, we'll see him probably on the mound tomorrow night. Here's a pop fly to short left field. Left fielder Criswell, no, center fielder Mitchell called it. Parker Mitchell. I thought uh, Criswell had that all the way, but what do I know? I'm just in the booth. <laughs> and with that, no runs, no hits, and no errors. And no score. And Russell's coming to bat here on My Town TV. Ashland Credit Union is pleased to announce the opening of two new locations. The ACU Cannonsburg branch is located across from Camp Landing on US 60. The Russell branch of ACU. Ashland Credit Union is pleased to announce the opening of two new locations. The ACU. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollock. Pollock's has been in business for 150 years. My grandfather purchased Pollock's from his niece in 1955. And 69 years later, my family gets to celebrate 150 years in Ashland, Kentucky. And we want to thank you and your families for your support over 150 years. Campus of Russell High School. In the bottom of the first inning, Greenup County got one runner on on a HBP and then was promptly doubled off by a line drive hit to the shortstop, uh, Mokus, who is actually leading us off. I heard uh, on the radio, I guess Sunday, yesterday, listening to the Reds broadcast, how they talked about, you know, a lot of times in this game, you make a big play in the field, and all of a sudden you're next up to bat, or vice versa. You make a mistake out in the field, and guess what? It's your turn to bat, so you yeah. got to have that short memory. Yeah, Kyle Mokas made a nice play there. Kyle Mokas comes up the leading hitter on this Red Devil team, hitting 404 on the season. Uh, he's got on base ten times via walk, so he's somebody that uh, opposing pitchers don't generally like to pitch to. Mocha steps into the box, and we're ready to play ball. Casey Gammon on the mound for the Musketeers tonight. 2.33 earned run average. 
Foul ball off to the left. Makes it 0-1. You know, you look at the 63rd district this year, Nathan, uh, you, know, you got Raceland playing down and playing Lewis County tonight down there. Raceland got to be, you know, on paper, the prohibitive favorite. Ball up. In the 63rd district, being the defending 16th region champions themselves and, you know, returning a lot from that team. But these two teams, you know, they can beat anybody on any given night. There's a foul ball off to the left side and out of play. Tournament time should be really exciting this year. One ball, two strikes. And I believe we found out the tournament is being held here at this field. Yeah, the 16th region tournament will be here this year. I'm looking forward to that. Ball outside, 2-2. Two, two. Where is the 60, 63rd tournament held this year? Is it, it is, Greenup? It is at Greenup this year, yep. There's a curve ball outside. Going to ask for another baseball. Yeah, Gammon did not like the feel of that one. Too new, I guess. So, saying last inning, the wind is kind of is blowing from left to right at a pretty decent little clip. It's not blowing as hard as it was Saturday down at the softball field. That wind was cranking any ball up into the left field. Foul back. Count stays full. Any ball that got hit from center field to left field in the air had a chance. Yeah, I got to do the uh, Russell-Lincoln County game there Saturday. It was the same way. Uh, of course, uh, the, the player who did hit put it up in the air there, Lily Smith for Russell. I mean, she. Oh. Hot shot to shortstop who was unable to field it. It was a very tough play. I'm not sure who the official score is. Who's going to mark that? Very could easily be a base hit or an error, either one. Chris, that you're the official scorer tonight, aren't you? I think that was a single. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> it was a hard hit ball. Tough on the shortstop there, Luke Boggs. And Luke Boggs, the, the, the usual shortstop's on the mound tonight, Casey Gammon. So, you know, Luke Boggs, a freshman for Greenup County out there. Couldn't come up with that one. That brings uh, Hankins to the plate. There's a hard ground ball foul down the third base line. That was about a foot away from being really dangerous. But as I was finishing my thought earlier, Lily Smith, the player for Russell who hit the home run the other night, I mean, she sent it into orbit. I think it would have been out of there no matter the wind yeah. that night. <laughs> that girl can hit home runs. There's a swing and a miss up. I believe that makes the count 0-2 on Hankins. Gammon looks at the runner at first. Comes plateward. Here's a fly ball to right, and that will be foul. Not almost out of play, but not quite. Count remains 0 and 2. Runner at first gets his lead. And pitcher comes play. What? Well, here's a little bloop job down into right field. Runner from first goes on to third. Throw goes into third. And with that base hit, Russell has runners on the corners with no outs. Got to like this if you're the Red Devils here. Great start. Getting the first two on board for uh, Nick Adams. Adams hitting 306 on the season. Nick Adams, that's the first time I've seen him on the field this year. I mean, you can tell he spent a lot of time in the weight room in the offseason. Uh, he's you know, played football this, this year for the first time. Uh, strong player, hitting three, 306, I believe, for Russell this year. See if 
Russell has any plays on in this first and third situation with no outs. Gammon comes set and to the plate with a curveball. Nice curveball. Drops it in there for the strike. This is one of the umpires who delays his call for a long time, so you were you were being confident it was going to be a strike. <laughs> I had to wait. I didn't say strike. I just said he dropped it in. He yeah. could have dropped it below, I guess. Throw to first for the pick. Batter safe. Runner at third stays put. Hankins gets his lead on first. Pitcher gets a sign, comes set. And the pitch runner at Frankings goes. Throw down to second is not in time, gets the way. The runner from third scores, Mokus. Well, that worked out beautifully for Russell there. That's exactly what they wanted. Uh, they drew the throw down to second base, and uh, Mokus was ready to go and uh, took advantage of it and one to nothing, Devils. And time's called on the field. Kind of surprised. I kind of figured Greenup might have their own defensive play on. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't notice anybody cutting in front of second base to cut that throw off. Um, you know. He had to try to get Mocus trapped there on third base between the there at home. Right. But I will say, you know, Mocus kind of stayed put until he made sure it was away. So it could have just been a straight a straight one one steal. Here comes a pitch to the plate, a curveball fouled off. Adam steps back in, ready to hopefully do some damage for his Red Devil team. Here comes the pitch. Ball is up. Two and two, the count. As we are dodging stinging insects in the booth. <laughs> Gammons comes plateward. Here's a curveball. Ground ball between the shortstop third base hole. The runners come around third, coming home. The throw is cut off, and just like that, three batters, three base runners, two of them scoring, makes it a two-to-zero ball game. Yeah, Russell starting this game off spectacularly against Casey Gammon on the mound with no outs. So stepping up is number 23, the second baseman, Jaden Frazier. Gammons comes to the plate, shows bunt, pops it up into the air. It is down, but it rolls foul. Jaden Frazier, another uh, hitter here for Russell, hitting uh, 300 and above this season. He's hitting right at 300. And they bat all four of those hitters at the top of the order. Gammon comes set, and here's the pitch. Curveball fouled off. Here's the curveball's got quite a bit of movement. Looks like it from here. But I've not seen many swings and misses. Uh, I feel like the, they've been fouled off. They've mm -hmm. not been hit square. And here's the pitch. Foul back. That was a fastball. Ball outside. One ball, two strikes. And we'll say this, it seems like with every hitter so far, Gammon has gotten ahead and has gotten to two strikes. He's just not been able to get the put away. Gammon comes to plate. Another curve ball. That is ripped down the left field line. Foul. 
Just foul down the left field line. Another one very dangerous and about a foot away from being big trouble. For the Musketeers, you know, they, they've got to keep uh, keep control of this inning here that Russell has going because, uh, as we said, they've struggled to produce uh, on the offensive side this year. Well, and if you're a coach, too, you're going to recognize that ball up and in. Uh, both coaches are going to recognize that. So I would think, especially being a former coach myself, I'm going to try and push. I'm going to push. I'm going to make the other team make plays. I'm going to make them handle the ball, throw the ball. Um, and just see what comes of it. If you get beat by that, you get beat. But I'd rather get beat being aggressive. Here's a fly ball to right field foul. I'd rather get beat being aggressive than being passive. Um, and, you know, we, I think we saw that earlier, um, even with, um, I think, uh, first batter, first couple batters, we had a couple stolen bases. You know, Russell playing that, uh, that, that, that aggressor. Mm -hmm. You know, green up, I'm sure when they get some guys on base, they'll be Looking to do the same. 2-2 two -two pitch, ball outside. Got to hand it to the Russell hitters here. We've seen a lot of foul balls, like you said. They're really making Casey Gaiman work here in this first inning. Adam still over at first base. Not a big lead. Here's the pitch. Foul ball straight back. Nice battle here between Gammon and Frazier. Two sophomores. They'll be playing against each other a lot, and I figure they've probably played against each other a lot just throughout their career up to this point. Gammon looks at the runner and comes set. Here's the plate. Here's a fly ball to deep right left right left field. Uh, Holbrook, Holbrook makes, makes the, the catch yeah. for the first out, and Adams has to retreat back to first base. That ball was scorched just right at Holbrook. Yeah, really unfortunate there for uh, Jaden Frazier. He uh, made good contact. It's right to uh, Hunter Holbrook. Kind of lost the ball a little bit in the pillar here. Couldn't quite see where it was in comparison to everything else. Stepping in is number 11, Lothar. Yeah, Avery Lothar standing in, uh, hitting 179 on the year. After those first four hitters for Russell, you know, the averages lighten up quite a bit from there on down. So any production Russell can get from here on down in the order is a bonus. That is a wild looking bat. Curve ball outside. 1-1. One, one. The Invictus, I'm told. It's a giant pencil. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Plate word. Paints the outside corner. And it counts again, one ball, and we have two strikes. Game and comes set, and the pitch. Fast ball, and the ball's hit to center field, and it drops in in front of Boggs for a hit. Boggs gets it in real quick, and Russell's threat has not abated yet. We have runners on first and second with one out. And that brings up Jared Witt, the catcher. Take that pencil and write him down for a single. <laughs> that average just went up just a little bit. Sure did. Yeah, it was a good job by uh, Matthew Boggs in center field there, retrieving it quickly and getting it in to stop uh, the runner at second base, Nick Adams. Keeps the double play intact and uh, the infield fly rule. There's 241 hitting Jared Witt. Gammon with a first pitch curveball. That's out of the zone. Wood steps in to do some damage. Gammon's come set and comes to the plate. Ball is in the dirt to the outside. Runners think about it, but think better. 
and hold up. Nice block there by Atkins. As the wind seems to be picking up a little bit harder blowing from left to right. Gammon comes set. Here's a pitch. Here's a fly ball to center field. Center fielder makes the catch and again gets the ball in fairly quickly. The runners cannot advance and there's two down. Hey, Russell's seeing the ball really well against Casey Gammon right now. They're making solid contact. Now batting number 25, Caden Criswell. That brings up the left fielder, number 25, Caden Criswell. Runners on first and second, two out. Here's the pitch. It looked a bit more like a slider. Does you know if he has a slider as well? I know didn't quite have as big of a break and seemed to be a little quicker. It did look like it, uh, and I'm not sure what he has in his arsenal as far as the details of his pitchers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looked like the same pitch with the same result low and outside. Could Kay. be a four-seam fastball or something. Caden Criswell, a sophomore, hitting 162 on the year so far. Greenup County hoping they can get out of this inning with uh, Holden Russell to two runs. And that would be a kind of a that'd be a big win for them, you know, with Russell having send, sending seven men to the plate thus far, and only able to get two runs. That'd be a that's something you can build on as you uh, come come into uh, start to bat. Gamut comes set and comes to the plate, fouled to the right side, out of play. Two balls and one strike. Well, Nathan, we had a four-minute top of the first. We've had a 20-minute uh, bottom <laughs> of the first. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Fast ball to the third base. Takes a funny nice hop. Play. He's able to field it. That was a phenomenal play by third baseman Alexander. That ball took a funny hop, and he was able to – uh, he didn't even have to knock it down. He caught it in his glove, was able to get the force out at third. So with that, two runs scored on how many hits? We got four hits. Four hits, no errors. After one is Russell two, green up nothing here on My Town TV. Trust is something earned, not given. Better financials lead to a better life. All with the Better Bank headquartered in Boyd County and serving the Tri-State. KFB, the bank you trust and the community you love. Right now, one in four Kentucky high school seniors are dealing with anxiety and depression. That's one in four. It's okay to ask for help and Pathways is listening. Learn more or connect with help today at pathways-ky.org. Welcome back to the campus of Russell High School in the 63rd District tilt between Greenup County Musketeers and the Russell Red Devils. Top of the second inning, Russell is up two to zero as Greenup County has their cleanup hitter coming to back, number 10, Colin Alexander, the third baseman. Yeah, Alexander, he's the leading hitter on this Greenup County squad this year. He's hitting 370. Hankins looks in for the sign and gets it and starts his windup. Pitches high and outside, fastball, ball one. Alexander missed a couple games there earlier in the season. He got injured in the Boyd County game and uh, came back quickly. Ground ball foul to the right side. Greenup County was really happy to get him back. Uh, 
one of these talented sophomores. They have a good sophomore class at Greenup County. Here's the pitch. Here's a line or a high fly ball to right field, and, and that gone. ball is out. That ball is past the trees. That was an absolute moonshot by it Colin was. Alexander. He, he got that one down and in and took it out of here. Colin Alexander, first home run of the season for Greenup County. And just like that, Greenup cuts this Russell lead in half to two to one. That ball was smoked. Like we say, district play, you just never know what's going to happen. Right. <laughs> That'll bring up the left fielder, number 21, Hunter Holbrook. Yeah, Holbrook stands in hitting a 220 on the season so far for the Musketeers. He's a talented freshman. First pitch is on the outside corner. We continue that theme of just youth, youth, youth on this field. These teams will be good and doing battle for the next couple of years, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Good pitch there by Hankins, painting the outside corner again. Makes it 0-2. See if he comes back with a breaking pitch or maybe goes up and in with a fastball. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, fouled straight back. I got to say, Nathan, the field looks really nice here at Russell today. I didn't comment on that earlier, but just a, they've done a good job with it. With all the rain we've had, and I mean, mm -hmm. it's a, it's really a miracle any of these fields look good. But yeah, I noticed <laughs> that too. It, when I walked in, I meant to make a metal no, mental note of it, and then mm -hmm. didn't. <laughs> I'm glad you did. But uh, yeah, the field looks great. Hankins starts his pit wind up. Here's a breaking ball outside. Makes the count one and two. And happy to know the Regents here this year. That'll be a shorter drive for me than heading out to West <laughs> Liberty last year. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a one, two, ball outside, two, two. Yeah, softball was in West Liberty two years ago, and last year was in Vanceburg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this year, softball, I believe, is at Ashland. Someone told me that the other day. So I believe you're right. Here's a line drive to right center field. That will be cut off by the center fielder. Runner's on his horse on his way to second and is there standing up. So Greenup County has answered the two runs from Russell with some effective hitting of their own to start this second inning. It was a nice piece of hitting, too. Um, just went where the ball was pitched. I thought that ball had a chance to get to the wall, and if it had, Holbrook may be standing at third base. Very well could be, I would imagine so. Or, I'm sorry, that's that was Roy. No, that was Hol Hunter, Hunter Holbrook. Hol you're, was you're Hunter right. Holbrook, yeah. 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 Here's another left-handed hitter, uh, Gavin Roy, standing in. You know, I, Now, I saw this guy launch one over the uh, wall last year against Lewis County in a game I did, so he's capable of doing so as well. Hankins looks to the runner at second, comes plateward. Leaves it ball out, up and out. Now that home run that Alexander hit, I don't think that was aided by wind. You know, we were talking about the wind earlier. Right. That was not aided by wind. That was just a moonshot. Curveball in for a strike. Hankins looks into the sign, and here is the 1-1 one, one pitch. Or not. Hankins steps off, resets. I don't know many of the baseball umpires. I know a lot of the softball ones from my time coaching. Fastball out. But I believe, is that Tom Flanagan on the bases? I do not know, Nathan. If I it do is, not know. the only reason I would know him is because he used to do softball. <laughs> <laughs> 
the 2-1 pitch coming up. Here we go. Ball outside. Looked like a curveball. 3-1 the count here. Uh, you know, Greenup County looking at the possibility of a big inning for them here if uh, can't go ahead and deal with Gavin Roy. Hankins looked a bit frustrated after that last pitch. I don't know if he knew what he did wrong. Here's a pitch on the outside corner. Makes the count full. I don't believe there are any outs. No outs. Holbrook at second base. Pitches outside, ball four. So we got runners at first and second with no outs. And that brings up the second baseman, number 13, Ty Logan. Now batting number 13, Ty Logan. Yeah, Ty Logan, the second baseman, coach's son for the Musketeers. Hitting 156 on the season so far. We're down in that part of the order for Greenup County as well. Uh, you know, you got Logan hitting 156, Gammon on deck hitting 111. And you just put a guy on there. You can't like that if you're Elijah Hankins. You just put a guy on hitting 091 so far this season. Yeah, you could tell after that curveball that was outside, he was not happy with himself. I think he realizes that um, he's going to have to go to work on these next few batters. As the uh, coaching staff for Russell finished their conversation on the mound. I'm sure they were talking about what was going on in the Middle East over the weekend. <laughs> I'm sure Russell would like to turn two right here, if nothing else. Uh, Mocus and Frazier up the middle, certainly capable of it. And they're at double play depth. Corners are in. Here's the pitch. Batter shows bunt. Ball outside. Pulls it back. Oh, no, it was a strike. He must not have pulled it back. Yeah, Greenup County, they would love to move these runners along here, try to manufacture some runs, play some small ball here in the second inning. As old softball guy, I love that. Bunt and steal, bunt and run. Gammon's got his sign, looks back at the runner at second and pours towards the plate. Another bunt attempt, foul. Now it's foul. At first I thought it may have hit him on the foot. But yeah, the I thought it, was, it looked like it was coming right at him. He, he apparently jumped out of the way. Got the bat on the ball. Count still 0-2. Well, no, he didn't get the bat on the ball, actually. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought he actually got the bat on the ball, but it's 0-2, but the runner advanced to third there. So it wasn't a foul. I, okay. Here's a pitch. That, ha um, <laughs> that pitch was almost hit him in the knee as well. He was able to get a bat on that. I wonder the runner at first took off. At first I thought that may have been a hit and run. But that was either hit the ball or be hit. Runners on the corners, 0-2 still. Here's the pit runner. Fake to third, throw to first. The old butcher boy play. Is that, that's what that was, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that what Marty used to call that? <laughs> yeah, Marty. No, butcher boy was bunt and then throw. <laughs> I can't remember what he called that one. Here's a pitch towards the plate. Ball low, runner at first, took off on a delayed steal. No throw from the catcher. Well, you can't really like that either if you're Russell because it takes away the possibility of the double play here. Let's see how Russell plays it defensively if they're going to bring their infielders in or play them normally. It looks like third baseman's two or three steps off of the grass. Russell's. They're the first baseman's way behind it, or way behind the bag. Here's the pitch, curveball outside. Doesn't seem like he's finishing his pitches on those that are floating out like that curveball did. Yeah, huge opportunity here for Ty Logan and these three bottom hitters in the Greenup County order. You know, two to, 
Two to one, the score, and two runners in scoring position here. Hankins from the windup comes to the plate. Here's a foul ball to the left side out of play. And we'll do it all over again. Two balls, two strikes, no outs. Runners on second and third. Ty Logan at the plate. Russell up one to nothing. Greenup scored one this inning with a home run and is looking to tack on a few more. Here comes Hankins to the plate. Curveball gets lifted out to left field. Left fielder is unable to get to it. It will drop in front of him. The runner from third scores. The runner from second scores. And just like that, Greenup has taken a two-to-one lead. I thought the right fielder had a chance, um, but he kind of slowed up right at the last minute, and it dropped right in front of him. I think just one came across right there. Just the runner from third scored that time, so the runner from second made the it over to second, third. I think the second person I saw was the next bat on deck batter coming over to get the bat out of the box. Yes, yes, I just saw yes. two cross in front of me and I understand. <laughs> assumed that it was uh, – my first thought was, man, they got the runner at second really read that ball well. Here's a bunt down the first baseline. It is, is good. good bunt. The runner at first – Looking call for a call. Here. I don't see any call. Did he go out of the baseline or not? We're waiting to find oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> the runner at third scored either way. He did. He came, he did score. It was just a question of whether he went out of the baseline going to first base here. So Right. We'll see. As the bunt was fair, first baseman fielded it. He looked to come home, and about that time the runner was passing him. I don't think he tagged him. No, he didn't tag him. I know that. Uh, it was just a matter of whether he went so far out of the baseline and called him out. And I'm not sure if the second base umpire has a call on that. That should be the first base umpire's call because he's looking right down the line. Yeah, the home plate umpire. Yeah. Or what <laughs> I asked. Two, two to pick yeah. from here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, and it is a tough job. Yeah. And they call him safe. Call, yeah. So it was a well-placed bunt. Now, of course, uh, Russell's coach, Tim Rice, going to come out and have a word with the uh, umpires after that call. So it's going to put Ty Logan out on second, Casey Gammon on first, and uh, still nobody out in this inning. Yeah, Russell has not marked the uh, running lane that three-foot running lane from halfway up the line to the bag. So it's even – it makes it that much harder for the home plate umpire to make that call. Yeah, very difficult call to make. But the end result is runner from third scored. There are runners now at first and second with no outs. What an answer for the Musketeers here in the top of the second. You know, we've talked about Greenup having a problem scoring runs this year, but as soon as Russell puts two on the board, they come up with three, got two runners on base and nobody out, and get ready to turn the order over to the top. Hankins comes to play. Here's another bunt. Attempt. Was pulled back and called a ball. The guy batting right now is uh, just a yet, a yet another sophomore on this Greenup County team, Gage Lamarck. He's uh, only had 10 at-bats on the season. Bunt attempt. So not a lot of experience for him. I did see him play in one of the games I called earlier this year. Uh, pretty impressive player, to be honest with you. And you're talking about getting bonus production out of the bottom of your lineup and that's exactly what's allowed Greenup to take this lead is all this production from the bottom of the lineup and they're doing what we talked about too earlier making them making Russell make plays bunting you know uh, Lamarck shows a bunt again pulls it back called strike one ball two strikes yeah, standing on deck is the top of the order, the most dangerous hitters on this Greenup team, Matthew Boggs and Bradley Adkins, Cohen Underwood. So you really want to get this out here if you're Elijah Hankins. And Greenup would like nothing more to put more ducks on the pond for the top of the lineup. 
Here's the pitch. Curveball hit to the second baseman. Second baseman goes to short and on to set first a for a double play. Way to turn that double play. Almost textbook. Frazier to Mocus to Lothar. Lothar. I'll get it right eventually. Mocus. Mocus. Now batting number two, Matthew Ball. And just like that, there are two outs. It's just what the doctor ordered for the Devils there. A double play. Much needed, and it was, as you said, slickly fielded and uh, professionally turned. Runner on third for Greenup. Two outs. Hankins from the windup. Here's a pitch. Boggs shows bunt, which was kind of surprising to me. But, you know, if, as a coach, you stick with what work, what works. Yeah, even with two outs here, uh, Matthew Boggs hitting 317. You'd think they'd let him swing away here, but never know. Maybe he's trying to catch a... In a game like this, you would expect that three runs is not going to be enough to win it. Wouldn't imagine so. There's another bunt. They're showing bunt. Ball outside. Matthew Boggs, one of the three seniors on this Greenup County team. Here's the pitch. Out ball, fast ball outside. Boggs was hit by a pitch in the head, his first at bat. Here's a fly ball to center field. Proverbial can of corn, as you might say. And Mitchell makes the catch. So after a <laughs> long bottom of the first, we had a pretty decent long top of the second with the score. Greenup County 3, Russell 2, here on My Town TV. Primary Plus is celebrating over 40 years of its mission of quality, advanced, affordable health care. With more than 11 primary care locations throughout the region, Primary Plus believes in our communities and their patients. Primary Plus, always welcoming new patients. Visit online at primaryplus.net. I got to figure out a different way to write his name. M-O-A. 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 Maybe that was you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to, uh, to Russell High School as we're trying to figure out why I can't pronounce anybody's name apparently correctly <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's my handwriting but uh, last uh, inning Greenup County was able to score three and uh, pull one run ahead they are up three to two as Russell comes to bat Russell will send their eight nine one hitters up Parker Mitchell stepping in the box now center fielder Parker Mitchell hitting 224 on the season Gammon comes to the plate, foul straight back. If you're Russell, you're probably wanting to keep continue to see these, uh, you know, fouling the off-speed pitches off and making good contact with these with these straight pitches, the fastballs. Mm -hmm. And now Greenup County has called timeout. The catcher has. I'm not quite sure what's going on. If he's got an equipment issue, it looks like. Looks like it is an equipment issue. Parker Mitchell here batting for Russell, one of the three seniors on their roster. Two are in the lineup, Nick Adams and Parker Mitchell. Beautiful day at the ballpark while we take this break. I do want to mention 
uh, from us here at Mindtown TV, our uh, thoughts and prayers go out to Tay Thomas, the uh, Ashland football player who was severely injured in the car wreck over the weekend um, after visiting and watching the UK spring game uh, here at Mytown TV. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Tay Thomas and his family and all of the uh, Ashland Tomcat community as we pray for his speedy recovery. Yeah, no doubt. Tay Thomas, he was uh, looking to be a really important cog in that Ashland Tomcat wheel this season in football. Uh, the guy had got himself up to squatting 500 pounds, bench pressing 385 pounds. I mean, he was some kind of athlete. Atkins looks like his equipment malfunction is no longer malfunctioning as he says something to Parker Mitchell. And as he walks by, they giggle or laugh at something. Mitchell steps into the box. Ready for his second pitch of the at bat. Here's the pitch. Fastball inside and up. Makes a count one and one. Gammon's yeah, still on the mound for the Musketeers. Uh, you know, like we said, he really, really had to work hard in that first inning. Looked like a four seamer or a slider on the outside corner that missed. I say outside corner, outside corner of the outside of the left-hand hitter's box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a bit out there. Two and one. Here's the pitch. Ball outside. Three and one. Gammon seems to be laboring out there on that mound tonight. I mean, nothing, nothing's been easy for him. Fast ball up. Ball four. Yeah, and he's looking into the dugout with some frustrations. I'm not sure if that's a, I don't know what I'm doing or I need help fixing it or what. But mm -hmm. he's looked in a few times to the dugout. That brings up the right fielder, number nine hitter, number three, Caden Mitchell. That's a sophomore, Caden Mitchell, here hitting 222 on the season. Does, does Russell just go ahead and let him bunt here, get the runner Balls over? Throws the first. Um, I would let him see one good pitch if it was me. Especially seeing the way the pitcher's struggling. Well, there's the bunt attempt. Ball was out, pulled it back. So I guess he's going to make him, let him bunt. <laughs> yeah, let's move the runner over, I figure. You know, you got uh, Mocus and uh, Hankins coming up. Uh, if he can successfully get the bunt down, then you got to figure one of those guys can get him home. Bunt attempt there. Bunted through the pitch. Makes it one and one. I think Mitchell wishes he had that back. He seemed a little frustrated. He missed that one. Caden steps in. Gammon looks to first. Here's the pitch. Bunt attempt foul. Well, now it'll be time to swing away. One and two. Perhaps. I don't know. Some people just go ahead and go for it, you know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of what you were mentioning earlier with Gammon laboring. Um, I'm kind of surprised that they showed it before, a, at least before a strike was called, just to make Gammon work that much more. Mm, good point. You know, you can yeah. see that he's frustrated. Make him throw some pitches. Nonetheless, one ball, two strike count. No outs, runner on first. Gaiman comes set, goes to first for a pickoff play. Runner gets back easily. It's the type of situation with both of these pitchers tonight. Uh, you know the way that Sixty Third District plays these back-to-back -back nights. Uh, you know you're not gonna you're gonna leave this guy out there for as long as possible tonight. Yep, another pick to first. No safe. Neither of these teams have incredibly deep pitching staffs, but. Uh, you know, they definitely do have a – oh, nice hit. Here's a shot to right field. Over his Over head. the right fielder's head – or left fielder's head. Here comes Parker Mitchell. He's rounding third. They're going to challenge He's him. He's coming home. The throw to the plate is not caught by the catcher. Ball bounced in front of him. He was able to get a really good block on it to keep uh, Caden Mitchell, the batter, who's now at second base from getting an extra 90 feet. 
But Russell has answered Greenup's three with one of their own in the bottom of the second. So far, the story of this game has been some unlikely heroes, I guess we would say. Some guys, you know, hitting around about 200 coming through for both squads. Bottom of the lineup is always going to be your key to any sort of sustained uh, wins, winning, anything yeah. like that. So that brings up Kyle Mokas. Number one hitter. Here's the pitch. Ball, fastball, fouled off. 0-1. Oh yeah, Mocus, as we said, hitting 404 on the season. I mean, he's, you know, the, well, the these first two guys, you know, they're far and away. Russell's two top hitters, 404 and 389 for Elijah Hankins. Dangerous time for Greenham. Here's the pitch. Curve ball in the dirt. Ball gets away, but Mitchell is unable to advance. Good block again by Adkins, keeping the ball in front. Lefty Mocha steps in with a 1-1 count. Gaiman looks to second and comes plateward. Here's a fly ball to center field that is going to hang up for Boggs, who makes the catch. And that's the first out of the inning. Another well-hit ball uh, just uh, right to Matthew Boggs in center field. Now batting, number one, Elijah Hankins. That will bring up the pitcher, number one, Elijah Hankins. Russell's made solid contact off of Casey Gammon all night long so far. You know, Jaden Frazier and just right to the left fielder in the first inning. You know, Jared Whip popped out to center field in the first inning. Now Kyle Mokas blistered one out to center. Right-handed Hankus waits on a pitch. Ball in the dirt. Mitchell stays put at second base. Another good block by Atkins. Sure would be big for the Musketeers if Gamma could leave that runner out there on, on second. Batter calls time. Took a little too long for Hankins' liking. Gaiman looks at second and comes to the plate. Fastball to third and foul. That baseline, third baseline, third base baseline has had quite a bit of action tonight. Yeah, a lot of close balls there. All of them gone foul for Russell so far. Just out in front of uh, the Casey Gammon deliveries. Hankin steps in, and we're ready. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. So you got to be honest. We haven't had a lot of swing and a misses tonight, have we? I was just thinking. <laughs> I've not said that maybe once or twice <laughs> yeah, at all yeah, so far. Yeah. Makes count 2-2. Two, two. Gammon comes set. Here's the pitch. Fly ball. Straight back. Does Atkins have a play? No. Just out of play. Into the patrons. Gammon gets a new ball. Looks back at second, steps on the rubber. Ball up. Full count, Nathan. Important pitch here from uh, Casey Gammon. One out. Uh, Caden Mitchell really hoping for a chance to Across the dish, whether by a hit by Hankins or maybe Nick Adams. Next to batter, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Nice pitch. Looked like he took something off of that one. 
That was a really big pitch there from Casey Game and getting Elijah Hankins, his counterpart tonight, to sit down on the strikeout. Frazier wanting to say something to, I'm sorry, Logan. Logan wanted to say something to Gammon and Atkins, maybe setting up a possible pickoff play. That'll bring to the plate number three, the third baseman, Nick Adams. Nick Adams uh, tied for the lead in RBIs on this team this year, but not too many, though, still eight. Here's the pitch, ball up over his head. The ball almost hit the bat behind him. Adam steps back into the box, waiting on the pitch. Here it comes. Foul ball straight back. Yeah, I would say you want to be pretty careful here with Nick Adams at the plate, but uh, Jaden Frazier awaits on deck, and he's hitting 300 this season as well. So, you know, at that part of the Russell order, you got to really navigate your way through if you're Casey Gammon. 1-1 one, one count, two outs, runner on second. Here's the pitch, ball outside. You weren't sure about that one. Was not sure about that <laughs> one, and the umpire is so, he delays so much for his call. He does. We may need to raise our window here after this inning so we, so we can hear a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Well, they got the AC running in here. Well, they do. I it's believe nice. that was needed when we first got here. It was, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, it was real nice. It's pretty yeah. warm. It's still 84 degrees here in Russell. Sunny, beautiful day. Gammon's pitch. Pop fly on the infield. Looks like second baseman Logan has called it, and he has it looking into the sun. That was a difficult catch. But good job by Gammon getting out of the trouble there. Russell gets one across, and that ties the game up 3-3 three to three here on My Town TV. Insurance with a local agent. It's called service. Call me, Mary Boggs State Farm Agent in Ashland today at 606-744-1208. Welcome back to Russell High School on this beautiful Monday evening in this 63rd district matchup between Greenup County and Russell. Kind of starting from scratch right here. We are, yeah, three to three after a couple of, uh, you know, uh, high-scoring innings for these squads. Uh, three to three already, and Greenup County coming up with their two, three, and four hitters here in the top half of the third. Bradley Atkins, Cohen Underwood, and Colin Alexander, who we saw blast one out of here, his first at bat. Yeah, again, that was a moon shot. Now landing number 23, Bradley Atkins. That'll bring up catcher, number 23, Bradley Atkins. We've got the two, three, four hitters coming up. Here's the pitch. Ball outside. Now Bradley Atkins made solid contact his first at bat as well, lined out to Kyle Mokas at shortstop. That was the play that uh, doubled up Matthew Boggs off first base. Here's the pitch. Ball inside. I think I'm going to raise this back up. It's a little more difficult to see through the screen. We decided to open our windows. 
No Maybe. doubt. Much better view. Yeah. I agree. Here's the pitch. Here's a fly ball to left field. Looks like it will be out of play. Way out of play. Yeah, we thought we'd open the windows. Maybe we could hear the umpire a little better. Uh, and then we dropped the screen to keep the stinging, flying insects out. But it made it more difficult to see. You all get a little bit of insight of what happens here in the, <laughs> in the booth. <laughs> Counts two and one. Here's Hankins' pitch. Ball right down the middle. Makes it 2-2. Two, 2-2, two. Two, two. and I believe Bradley Atkins took it to two strikes last time. Uh, really capable hitter here for the Musketeers. 2-2 two, two pitch. Ball, fastball outside. I don't think either one of these pitchers has their uh, A game on tonight. Uh, and another best stuff tonight. You know, they're getting ahead. They're getting almost every pitcher has gotten ahead of every batter, but they've just not been able to to put them away. Yeah. I mean, almost everybody has had a two strike pitch. It seems just, like it doesn't. It? <laughs> yeah. Ball up. It's ball four. And Greenup County has a leadoff runner on base. I'm going to say Bradley Atkins, I was checking out his stolen base statistics this year. He's just uh, tried one. He was successful in that one attempt. But I do know Bradley Atkins is quite an athlete. I wouldn't be surprised to see him challenge the arm here of uh, Jared Witt. Stepping into the box is number four, Cohen Underwood, the right fielder. Ball outside. Another fastball. Underwood hitting 220 so far this season. Hankins is getting visibly frustrated with himself on the mound. You know, he's not – the balls that he's missing, he's definitely missing. He's not getting uh, – he's not losing 50-50 calls. Here's the pitch. Looks like a curveball. Runner went. Throw to second. And he got under it, says the second base umpire. So, as you were saying about Atkins – Mark it down. Yeah, Here's really, really base. good athlete. I know he is, uh, you know, a quick player on the basketball court. Really got, got good, good, good speed, good athletic instincts. Uh, I trust Bradley Atkins to do anything on the any ball field. So now Underwood has a runner in scoring position. I guess somewhere in my mind right now, I'm comparing this to the game I saw here last year between Russell and Greenup County on this field where we saw like virtuoso performances from the two pitchers. It was Kyle Mokas and Carson Weirman who went toe-to-toe. -to -toe and man, drive, he blistered that stop. one. What a play was by that, Mokas. It was caught, and he did catch it in the air. We didn't see a call from, any, from the second base umpire. I was trying to wait if he was going to throw it to first. But, yeah, great catch by Mokas. It's yeah. the second one today. Yeah, yeah, Cohen Underwood hit that ball hard. That ball was right where that bar comes across, and I couldn't quite see. I saw it in his glove afterwards, but I couldn't tell if it hit the ground or not. Yeah, and Mocus had to kind of read that one around the umpire as well there. The umpire was kind of, that's where he stands, and uh, they did a good job of doing so. But now they bring a very dangerous hitter to the plate, uh, home run hitter, Colin Alexander. Alexander with that moonshot his last time up. We'll step in with a chance to get, put more runs on the board for Greenup. Hankins from the stretch comes set, and here's the pitch. Fastball up and away. As I was saying, though, the game I saw here last year did the Russell Greenup game. You know, Kyle Mokas put out a great performance for Russell on the mound, and and Carson Weirman for Greenup was, uh, you know, the best pitcher in the area last year. So it was a quick game last mm -hmm. year. <laughs> There's a fastball on the outside corner. I heard that. I did hear that one. So us raising the window worked. I was able to hear that strike. Raising the window raised the quality of the broadcast. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> Get Brian Harris on here. <laughs> He'll be with me tomorrow night down at Greenup, I believe. There's a pitch, exact same spot, exact same pitch, exact same result. One ball and two strikes now on Alexander. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball in the dirt. 2-2. Two -two. Greenup County looking to Alexander and freshman Hunter Holbrook here on deck to try to get Bradley Atkins in. And anything to the outfield, I would imagine Bradley Atkins is going to be scoring on with his aggressive speed. Yeah, he's got a pretty decent lead off out there. Here's the pitch. Ball outside. As you said, both these pitchers, they get to the two-strike count and then uh, just can't quite uh, find that pitch to put them away. Yeah, and as a coach, that can be frustrating. Uh, I, I feel for both these coaches kind of watching these pitchers, but you know you can't do it for them. These, both these pitchers have to navigate this and figure out how to get outs. Here's the pitch. Swing, Swing and a miss. And a miss. Got him. That's one yeah. way to get the outs. That's two down. Now number 21, Hunter Holbrook. Good job there by Hankins, making the pitch when he needed to against Kyle and Alexander. So that'll bring up number 21, Hunter Holbrook, the left fielder. I think you mentioned earlier he's a freshman. He is a freshman, made solid contact, doubled his first time at the plate. Mocha steps off the rubber and resets. Looks in for the sign. Here's the pitch. Ball's called strike. Well, that pitch looked good to me there. Uh, just uh, came right over the top of it and put it right where he wanted, I think. It looked like uh, everything about that pitch has confidence, and maybe that's all that Hankins needed was a swinging strikeout to get that confidence back. That's a good point. As as soon as I said the pitch looked really good, they break up the rhythm and they head to the mound <laughs> yeah. and talk to the pitcher. <laughs> I feel like Hank, that was Hankins is doing. I thought I saw well, him motion for him the come catcher out? to come okay. in. So, um, you know, again, you've got a runner at second. You saw this with Green up last inning. Maybe they're looking to maybe set up a play, a pickoff play of some sort. Middle infielders were huddled around second base. Be interesting to see if they've put a play on. Count is 0 and 1. Hankins looks into the sign. Both middle infielders are right on top of second base. Backing up now. Here's the pitch. Ball is down in the dirt. 1 1. Atkins' lead looks maybe a half step bigger than it was. Here's a ground ball to the shortstop. Mocha's throw, picks and throws, and he's out. Nice stretch over there by Frazier to get that extra six inches. That may have made the difference between the out and safe call. But no runs, uh, and I'm not sure how many no hits. No hits that inning. And no errors no after three and a half. It is a tie ball game. Struggling with addiction or know someone who is? MyTown TV is here to help. Scan the QR code on the screen or go to MyTownTVCares.com for links and contact information for local resources dedicated to addiction recovery. You're not alone. Reach out today. <laughs> I'm
I began fostering in 2020. Having a caring adult is important and I wanted to make sure that I gave that to any child that was in need. I chose to foster with Ramey specifically because Ramey just, they get it. The support that I get with Ramey is excellent. Anytime I need something, I know who to call and I can call any of them, any of them. It actually has positively impacted me because it started the Tolbert family. Welcome back to Russell in this 63rd district tilt between Greenup and Russell. It is after three and a half, it is a 3-3 ball game. And it seems like the majority of the damage, other than the home run from Alexander last inning, has all come from the bottom of the lineup. It has, and you know, both teams, as we said before the game, you know. The top of their lineups, you have a couple guys hitting 300 and stuff like that. Russell, in particular, the top four guys all hit 300 or over. But uh, after that, it dips off quite a bit on both these teams. Uh, you know, guys around the Mendoza line or below the rest of the way. But they have been coming through this game. You've got to give them credit. That's why, as we've said before, and this is a cliche, but that's why you play the game. <laughs> yeah, it is. You just yeah. never know. Just can't go by the statistics. Uh, Kind of gives you the tendencies of what they've done, but uh, what they can do is another thing altogether, uh, especially in a district game like this where they bring their best game, a little more focus, a little more effort. It means a lot to them. Russell's going to come up with their 4-5-6, uh, four, six, four, isn't five, it? 4-5-6 six right now, yeah. So the, kind Frazier, of the heart of the order. Frazier, Lothar, and Witt. Witt. Yep, Jaden Frazier. Avery Lothar and Jared Whit, a sophomore and two juniors. And with that, we are just about ready to play ball. Frazier steps in against Gammon. Adkins has a question for the dugout. And apparently it's answered, and he gives a sign. Here comes the pitch. Curveball to start off for a strike. That was a nice curveball by Casey Gammon that time. Uh, I'm sure Steve Logan would like to see a little more of that. Here's the pitch, fastball out. Seems like he's working a little quicker, too, this inning. Of course, he's the... <laughs> First couple, first three innings have been filled with uh, Russell base runners. It tends to slow you down a bit. They sure have. Jaden Frazier flied out to the left fielder Hunter Holbrook, his first at bat. Looking to get things started for the Devils again. 2-1 pitch outside makes it 3-1. I've noticed Gammon a few times has started hitters out with the curveball and then has gone to the fastball. That looked like a two-seamer. That ran back in towards the hitter, but missed. And Frazier is aboard. For the third inning in a row, Casey Gammon has uh, put the, the leadoff hitter on base. Russell hoping to capitalize. Stepping into the batter's box is number 11, Avery Lothar, first baseman. Yeah, Lothar singled in his first uh, try tonight. Here's the pitch, fastball outside. He was the first one tonight to prove me wrong. I said he was a, he was a 179 <laughs> hitter coming into the game, singled with a with that pencil bat. We, yeah, we you, penciled in uh, penciled yeah. in the hit. Yeah. Raise the average just a tick. Here's the pitch, fastball up. Seems like Gammon's really struggled with his fastball command. His his curveballs have looked really good, and he's gotten a lot of uh, strikes with the curveball. He's just having trouble uh, finding the fastball. Here's the pitch. Fastball up and out. I believe that makes it two and one. Pickoff attempt at first. Not in time. Gammon comes set. Not a not a very big lead out there at first. 
There's a looked like a change up. Nice change of speed. Puts Lothar even at two and two. Two two pitch. Fly ball to right left into field. That one. Holbrook has it. Gets the ball in. Frazier retreats back to first. One down. Both these pitchers, really, Casey Gammon and Elijah Hankins, they're in need of a, an easy inning somewhere along the way because they're running their pitch counts up pretty high to be this early in the game. And these both these teams turn around and do it again tomorrow, don't they? Sure do. Yeah, we'll have that one for you on My Town TV from the Greenup County baseball field. You'll be there, and I'll be on the other side of the football field doing the Russell softball game. Gammon, here's the pitch. First pitch to Witt outside. Yeah, I think Russell has an important softball game over there, a district softball game as well tomorrow night. Uh, it's Lewis, isn't it? Uh, it? And it's either Raceland or Greenup tomorrow night. Is I know they play Raceland and Greenup this week. Uh, those are big games for them. Russell's 1-0 in the district, and uh, – Softball already, this being their first district baseball game. I'm sure I've got it on my schedule sent to me somewhere. But nonetheless, I'll be over at softball field tomorrow evening. I believe first pitch is slated for 6 p.m. Here's the pitch here. Here's a line shot to left field. Holbrook has it, gets the ball in. Nice piece of hitting by Witt. That was a nice piece of hitting by Jared Witt there. Went down and got that, sent it right into left field. And once again, two base runners aboard for Russell. Now batting, number 25, Chrisley. They've not been short on threats tonight, that's for sure. Well, and that gets back to what you said earlier. Both these pitchers have really had to work hard to get through these first three innings. I think we saw our first runner of the night come in. Uh, I hear Frankie Brinkman called. Yep. Frankie Brinkman came in to run there at uh, first base for the catcher, Jared Witt. Caden Criswell in the box right now. Criswell hit into a fielder's choice to end that first inning. Here's the pitch. Ball outside. Actually hit a hot shot down the third base line, and the third baseman just made a beautiful play on it. Uh, Colin Alexander snatched it and touched third to get the force out over there. Yeah, that was a good play. Robbed Chris Well of a hit. Chris Well steps back into the box after a short conversation between Atkins and Gammon. Gammon comes plate word. Leaves a fastball up. 2-0. Oh. Yeah, I don't think it's intentional tonight. You know, both these pitchers are wasting a lot of pitches, but I just think both of them don't have their typical command, it doesn't look like. Swing and a miss. And that may be the case even more as we get deeper into this game. They start throwing more pitches. They start getting tired. Ball outside. Nice stop by Bradley Atkins, the catcher that time. You're right. This one could come down to who has the best bullpen, who has the most pitching depth without using your, your aces that are going to pitch tomorrow night. Right. <laughs> you know? right. Here's a pitch. Foul tip into the glove. Another full Strike. count. Another full count. Do have a softball update for the area. Wes Carter defeated Fairview 6-3. to three. Gammon just shook off Atkins. I've not seen him shake many off today. Here's a fly ball to second base. Second baseman. Damn, and man, no nobody calls it. That does lead to a force out 
at second. Well, they did get the force out at second. That's one of those. <laughs> I got it. You got it. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, let's just do this instead. <laughs> yeah, let's just get the force out. I'm okay. pretty sure Greenup would rather have the pop-up and have nobody standing 90 feet away from the go-ahead run, but um, it's probably the best possible scenario for Greenup having let that ball drop. It is, so 9-6 to six on the uh, out at second base there, I suppose. <laughs> you don't see a lot of 9-6 to six force outs. No. Runners on the corners, two outs. Parker Mitchell at the plate. He scored last inning. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. I think he was walked and then scored on Caden Mitchell's hit, if I remember correctly, who's standing on deck. Yeah, Russell had two runners on in the first, one in the second. Here they are in the third with two runners on as well. Runner goes on a breaking pitch into the second with no throw. That was a good pitch to run on right there. Well, Greenup County, too, learned from the first inning. Uh, best not to fire that thing down to uh, second base at that point. So runners in second and third, two outs. Parker they Mitchell at bat. Big opportunity for Parker Mitchell here with two runners in scoring position. And we got two more strikes. One and two. <laughs> yeah. Gammon shaking off Adkins again. Mitchell calls time. It's really the first time I've noticed Gammon shaking off his catcher. Maybe he's done it earlier in the game. I just didn't notice it. Here's the pitch. There's a curveball outside. Could have been a slider. Again, it had a bit more of a bite, a little more speed than some of the other breaking pitches. Crazy twos, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's the pitch. Swing oh. and a miss. He struck him out. That's a way to come back from that from Gammon. You know, and just like previous inning, the offensive the offense threatens, but is not able to get anybody across. After three. Three to three on My Town TV. Primary Plus is celebrating over 40 years of its mission of quality, advanced, affordable health care. With more than 11 primary care locations throughout the region, Primary Plus believes in our communities and their patients. Primary Plus, always welcoming new patients. Visit online at primaryplus.net. I know that we impacted them and it um, really helps, but I don't know if they really know how much they impacted us. The things these kids go through, we can't imagine. Almost every foster that we've had, we still have contact with. We choose to continue to foster with Remy Eastad because they've become family. I've never felt like they say, here you go, you're on your own. You can call them at any time. If they don't have the answer right at hand, they'll find it and get back with you. It's the top of the fourth inning here on the campus of Russell High School between Greenup County and Russell. Tie ball game, three to three. Been a lot of base runners. Been six runs scored between the two teams. We've talked about both pitchers are, you know, I would say at this point they're bending but not quite breaking. That's a good way of putting it. It's like a football team's defense that bends but doesn't break. That's what we've seen tonight. Three to three through through three. Uh, Greenup County with their six, seven, and eight hitters coming up this inning. And as we pointed out uh, earlier uh, in the broadcast, these six, seven, and eight hitters, uh, these are all sophomores who are really good baseball players, but they've just not got it going, you know, with the bats this season. Gavin Roy, Ty Logan, and Casey Gammon. But they did reach the last time. Gavin Roy walks, Ty Logan singled. 
And Casey Gammon uh, hit into a well, he he got on base, but he got he got with that bunt. I guess we call that a single. So here we go. First pitch was fastball outside. Here comes Hankins' second pitch. By that first pitch, fastball that was outside, but the batter swung. It is one and one. Here's a fly ball. To second base, second baseman's calling it and makes the play. Jaden Frazier takes care of that. One down. You know, you got to think the first pitcher that really has a quote unquote easy inning is going to have the advantage here uh, to maybe go a little bit deeper to be able to put their team in a position to. Put a few more runs across the plate. Fastball outside, ball one. You're right, and you'd have to think one of these pitchers is due an easy inning at this point because nothing has seemed easy so far for either. Ball down. And both at times have seemed frustrated with themselves. Fly ball to foul territory. Nice, nice catch. Cab. Wow. Looking into the sun, back behind him. Great catch by Adams. You know, I've seen quite a few baseball games this year. A lot of plays like that. And I've yet to see it actually made. You know, but he made the play that time. Good job by Nick Adams. Now batting number 11. And that's two outs. Games. So maybe Hankins is going to get that first. Easy inning. Easy inning. you say, yeah. If he does, he probably owes Adams a steak sandwich or steak dinner a little later after the game for after that catch. Fast ball up. Had a little life on it. <laughs> he did. He was rearing back and going to add to his velocity there. Here's the pitch. Ball out. Of course, Gammon, his counterparts, looking to make it as difficult as possible. No doubt. 2-0 pitch in the dirt, 3-0. He may be doing just that. Fast ball right down the middle. Taking all the way on that one. That's what this does if Gammon does get aboard here. It goes ahead and brings the number nine hitter up, and if nothing else, it'll turn the lineup over next inning. Ball inside. I don't think Hankins liked that call. Now batting. Now batting number six, Gabe Lamarck. So that brings the number nine hit it up, or hitter up. Lamarck, the DH, two outs. As I said, when he first batted, he's only batted 10 times this year, but I got to see a few of them in the Fleming County game I did earlier this season, and uh, I really like the way Gage Lamarck looks at the plate. I think he is a capable player, one of the super sophomore class for Greenup County. He grounded out to Mocus the first time at bat. Looked at a first pitch fastball up. Here's the second pitch. Called a strike. Right at the knees. 1-1. One, one. Hankins looks at Gammon at first. Now pours plateward. And he that hits him. him. Yeah. Well, maybe we spoke too soon. <laughs> so much for the easy hitting, huh? Runners on first and second. We're going to have a visit to the mound. Today is... I like the song choice, guys. Uh, yeah. I feel good. 
I guess that's what the uh, pitcher's telling the coach right now. <laughs> Of course, today is Jackie Robinson Day in Major League Baseball ballparks. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. While we've got some time, we want to use this opportunity to thank our sponsors. Uh, we couldn't do any of these games without them. Uh, you know, we don't really look to make money as much as we are trying to get some uh, exposure to some of these kids. You know, living in Eastern Kentucky, a lot of times it's hard to get some exposure to our really good athletes. And so uh, we we really aim to do that. There are coaches all over the college, coaches all over the country that watch our broadcasts when they're out scouting. So, again, we thank you to our sponsors, and we ask our audience to visit them and patronize them because they help us do what we do. Runner on first and second, two outs, and the batter is a leadoff hitter. And here's pounds the ball into the third base. And third baseman's unable to catch it. Oh, are you it kidding runs me? runs underneath his glove, and that's going to allow the runner who was a second to score. That was that was Casey Gammon. Gammon, came on around. yes. So that will probably be charged and should be charged an error on the third baseman. It was a tough play because the ball was almost like a swinging bunt. He was able to get to it early enough. He couldn't make a play on the bag behind him. He was trying to make that uh, quick pick and throw to first, and the ball was just unable to get, or he was unable to get his glove underneath it, and it just squirted out past him, and it really came to rest at the third base. So that's a tough break for yes, Adams. Again, that's a play you don't see very often, the ball moving so slowly that uh, once he overran it, uh, you know, it didn't have time for the shortstop to get there or anything to help out. <laughs> So the end result is Greenup is able to put a runner on the board. Still two runners on, and that brings up Adkins. And to think, just a few pitches ago, we were saying this was <laughs> going to be Elijah Adkins' first easy inning. Yeah. <sighs> Adkins Here's blisters a that one. Line drive to the left field. That's going to go all the way to the wall. That's going to clear the bases. One run is in. Two runs are in, and Atkins is standing at second with a two RBI stand up double. Probably should apologize to Hankins after the game for giving him the broadcaster's curse. You did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it went from the first easiest in, or the first easy inning to the biggest inning so far tonight for Greenup County. Now they bring up Underwood, their you know, their number three hitter, and he's hit the ball hard tonight as well. And Greenup scored all of these runs with two outs. Hankins looks to reset himself. Comes to the plate. No, steps off. And last time he lined out to the shortstop, Cal Mokas. Pitch is in the dirt outside, and Adkins ends up at third. It'll be a wild pitch, my guess, if you're scoring at home. Runner at third, two outs. Number three, hitter up. Here's the pitch. Ball in the dirt. Nice, nice. block there by yeah. Witt. Yeah, nice stop by Jared Witt. Saving what probably could have been a run there because Bradley Atkins on third. He's going to be aggressive. He's already got one stolen base today. Pitch on the outside corner. Fastball a strike. Makes a count two and one. Here's the pitch. Ball out. Three and one. Ooh. Here's a fastball. He absolutely just blew right by him. I don't think uh, I don't think Underwood was expecting that. I think he that swing was a off speed looking for swing. Here's a three two. 
That ball is ripped down the third baseline. It's down for a hit. The run, uh, runner on second will score. Uh, under Looking to slide into second base, and he's there with a sliding double. Well, the I green was, at bats have come alive. I was watching the runner at third score. The ball seemed kind of slow getting in from Campbell to Frazier. I couldn't tell. He may have bobbled it out there. But it looks like that's going to be all for Hankins. So with this pitching change, we will take a quick break here on My Town TV. Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches, and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Struggling with addiction or know someone who is? MyTown TV is here to help. Scan the QR code on the screen or go to MyTownTVCares.com for links and contact information for local resources dedicated to addiction recovery. You're not alone. Reach out today. And we're back as the new pitcher finishes his warm up tosses. The new pitcher is number 10, Luke Pennington. One of the three seniors on this Russell team. And this isn't a position change here. Luke Pennington's come in out of the bullpen. Yeah. Oh, Frank, Br Frankie Brinkman's pitching? Okay. Number 10, we had Luke Pennington on our roster. <laughs> Number 10, <laughs> that's what we had, but uh, okay. Okay, so Frankie Brinkman is pitching now. Yeah, KHSAA. Let us down. It did. <laughs> so we try and make some of these changes on what we're looking at. We haven't seen uh, any changes to the batting lineup, if so. Uh, yeah, we usually have to figure that out as we go, it seems like. Well, <laughs> the, Russell doesn't have a, 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 a DH, yeah. so I'm guessing Brinkman's going to be hitting second. Yeah, did Hankins go out in the field, guys? No, oh, they just took him out? Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, that'll bring up the uh, number four hitter, Colin Alexander, who hit the home run earlier in the game with two outs. Runner on second base, Cohen Underwood. Brinkman, a right-hander. Alexander, the lefty. Here's the pitch, ball outside. I didn't notice with Alexander when he was in the field, but does he throw right and bat left? I believe so, yes. He is the third baseman. Yep. <laughs> I'll never forget when I played uh, American Legion ball for the post-126 one year, uh, there's a few games where we had a left-hander playing third base. <laughs> it's an awkward uh, awkward uh, design it there. Was, it? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't easy for him. Brinkman gets the sign and comes set. Looks back at the runner at second and comes towards the plate. Fastball up. 2-0. 2-0. 
Two outs. They're, uh, it's, there's been two outs for five batters now. And four runs. Yep. All four of these runs score that Greenup has sco scored so far has been with two outs. And then I cast the curse, apparently. Here's the pitch. Ball outside. 3-0. Russell's still within striking distance. If they can kind of cut the bleeding off here, four runs is by no means insurmountable. Fastball on the outside corner for a strike, three and one. Brinkman's fastball, his two-seamer, has a lot of run away from a left-handed hitter. Here's a fly ball to center field. He gets a hold that of that ball's one. got a chance up against the wall. The center fielder, Mitchell, gets the ball in to second base, and that'll score another run. Colin Alexander's come to play some baseball tonight. Stand-up double for Alexander. He's got to be interesting. I'm not sure how many RBIs he has, but he's got to have three or four on today's game. Great job by Alexander there. Got a sweet swing for a left-hander. That'll bring up Hunter Holbrook, the left fielder. And with that run scored, you'll close the book on Hankins if you're keeping score. He allowed eight runs, and I'm not sure on how many hits, and not all of those runs were earned. There were a few errors that. No, the huge error earlier in this inning down at the, the third base line there that uh, allowed this inning to continue. Here's a pitch. Here's a pop fly to the right side. First baseman Lothar has it, and that will end the inning. So, I'm not sure, almost nine. I believe all nine hitters came to the plate, was able to score four runs. They got three hits that inning. Three hits, Three hits, four yeah. runs, yeah. and Greenup leads after four and a half, eight to three. Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches, and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Struggling with addiction or know someone who is? My Town TV is here to help. Scan the QR code on the screen or go to MyTownTVCares.com for links and contact information for local resources dedicated to addiction recovery. You're not alone. Reach out today. And we're back on the campus of Russell High School, getting ready to start the bottom of the fourth inning. Now it's halftime. Now it's halftime. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. Halfway through this one. <laughs> um, Last inning, Greenup able to put five runs on the board on the strength of three hits, a couple errors, and a couple walks. Hit batsman. Had a little bit of everything. The other 63rd district matchup going on right now down at Raceland. Raceland's up four to one on Lewis County, and that's probably as expected, we could say. Raceland, the favorites in the 63rd district, and one of the favorites in the 16th region this year. Had a tough loss uh, over the weekend to Rowan County. Yeah. Yeah. One run game, I believe it was. Here's a pitch straight back. Catcher going to have a not quite run out of room. Yeah, Caden Mitchell at the plate had himself a big double in the second inning. Over the top of the left fielder. 9-1-2 batters coming up for Russell. And this is a spot where Russell can try and eat away at this five-run lead. Here's a ground ball to third. Fielded cleanly by Alexander. 
Throw is up, and Roy is able to get back down on the bag for the out. Yeah, that was a big play there. Good job by the first baseman, uh, Gavin Roy, you know, catching the ball and getting his foot on the bag in time. You know, it's hard a lot of times for a first baseman, if you got to go up real high, to actually come back down on the bag. If he had missed that bag on his way down, uh, Mitchell's safe. He got down the, got up and down the line pretty quick. That'll bring up Kyle Mokas. Foul ball off to the left side. And rebounded back into the field of play. As we've seen here and as we talked about between innings there, uh, Casey Gammon now on the mound can pitch with some more confidence with the five-run lead and has come right after the hitters and make them put it in play. And once you start as a coach and even as a player, once you start getting up into five, six, seven-run lead area, you start looking at outs. How many outs does it take? Here's a fly ball to left field and being catching it on the run is Holbrook. Nice catch. Loses his hat in the process. Two outs. <laughs> so you know what I'm getting thinking about saying right now. What's that? Two outs, two quick outs. Oh, Maybe this yeah. is the quick, yeah. easy inning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, your jinx worked in the previous <laughs> inning, so we'll see if it uh, works this time. Uh, Russell fans are certainly hoping for that. So turnabout is fair play, I guess. We'll see what happens. Brings up Brinkman. Well, no. no it's Elijah Hankins it Elijah. there at the bat. Yeah. So he must have re-entered. Here's the pitch. Foul ball. Yeah, i got to be honest with you. A lot of times in these games anymore, I've, I've given up on the, uh, even understanding the substitution rules that have come into play, and it's particularly in softball. It seems that you can come and go as you please you <laughs> in get, the games. In softball, I know you get one re-entry. Of course, you have the DP and flex player. Oh, yes, you would know this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I'm not an expert. You know, and I coached it for 10 years in Fleming County, and there was times where even I got confused yeah. and would have to talk to an umpire. Now, can I do this? Yeah. Usually it was, hey, can they do that? Yeah. So here's a pitch, a breaking ball outside, makes it two and one. So usually in a situation like this, um, if if Brinkman comes back out to pitch, which I'm sure he will, that will essentially put uh, Hankins out of the game. Because once once you've re-entered and then leave again, that's that no. after you leave the second time, then you're it's essentially dead uh, for the game. Here's the pitch. Ball is out. I uh, know it called strike. Very generous strike by the uh, home plate umpire. But his opinion is the one that counts. Full count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Gammon with the pitch. Tried to go to that same spot. Got a little further outside. Umpire said not this time. And... We have a runner on first. That'll bring up Nick Adams. Now batting number two, Nick Adams. 306 header on the season. Really needs to keep this inning going for Russell here. And only the only the bottom half of the fourth. Plenty of time for Russell to come back in this one, but uh Here's a ground ball to third. Third baseman Alexander gets it, throws on to first, and retires the side. So no run, no runs on no hits, one walk. And after four, Greenup leads eight to three here on My Town TV. Ashland Credit Union is pleased to announce the opening of two new locations. The ACU Cannonsburg Branch is located across from Camp Landing on US 60. The Russell Branch of ACU is located at 1200 Dietrich Boulevard. Visit Ashland Credit Union today to learn how you can achieve more in 2024. From hand-cut steaks to fall off the bone ribs, Texas Roadhouse has something for everyone. Visit TexasRoadhouse.com or download the Texas Roadhouse mobile app to get on the wait list or place a to-go order online. Fresh baked bread and honey cinnamon butter await at Texas Roadhouse. Order their legendary catering for your next event. Located at 501 Winchester Avenue across from Ashland Town Center Mall. 
Texas Roadhouse will help you support your local school. Struggling with addiction or know someone who is? My Town TV is here to help. Scan the QR code on the screen or go to MyTownTVCares.com for links and contact information for local resources dedicated to addiction recovery. You are not alone. Reach out today. All right, welcome back to Boyd County High School as we're trying to get a flurry of defensive changes situated by Russell. Um, we're going to work on these for just a second as the new pitcher. I believe the new pitcher is Jaden Frazier, Nathan. Frazier is moving to the pitching position from second base. Yeah, Frazier coming into pitch. He has an earned run average of uh, 1.62 this year. Not a bad pitcher, uh, thrown 13 innings. Struck out 14 in those 13 innings, so good pitcher. And we, what we had out in the middle infield, Kyle Mokas moves over to second base, and uh, Elijah Hankins stays in the game and plays uh, shortstop. So if you're keeping score at home, those were the changes. So it was a short stint for Frankie Brinkman in the game. It was, uh, but he, he came in and got the job done, was only allowed the, uh, the one run. He did. So Frazier, right-handed hitter, begins his windup and comes to the plate. Ball is up. Batting for Greenup County is number 12, Gavin Roy. Yeah, Roy's walked tonight and then uh, popped out to the second baseman. Ball is up, 2-0. and oh. Shadows are starting to get pretty long here this evening. Oh, it's a perfect night for baseball here on the Devil's Diamond. Huh. Ball outside, 3-0. and Here's the pitch from Frazier. Ball inside and up. Well, that's an inauspicious start here for Jaden Frazier. Go ahead and put in the leadoff runner on. That'll bring up the number seven hitter, number 13, Ty Logan. Fourth time in five innings, Greenup County's put their leadoff hitter on. Out of the stretch is Frazier, comes set. And the pitch, here's a fly ball to right field. Right fielder has a bead on it, Mitchell, and makes the catch. Roy heads back to first. That'll bring up the number eight hitter, number 11, Casey Gammon, the pitcher. Now batting number 11, Casey Gammon. His run that last inning was, I believe, the one that kind of got opened the floodgates a little bit. It did. He's the runner who came home. Well, he walked the last inning, and then he came home on the error on the third baseman. Here's a pitch. Bunt. Looked like it bunted it off his foot. Makes a count 0 and 1. Frazier comes set, looks at the runner at first, and comes home. Ball low. Hard hit ball by Casey Gammon. Ball over to left field. Left fielder gets the ball in. Criswell gets it in fairly quickly to hold both runners to just 90 feet. Trying to find some uh, region scores as they come across the KHSA website. Yeah, as, as we've said uh, throughout the game here, Casey Gammon going to come out of the game in favor of uh, – Trying to get that number 14. coming in, 14. Carter Ratcliffe? You Maybe. are correct. That's Carter Ratcliffe over there for the Musketeers. One of the seniors on this team. There's Gage Lamarck again in. 
Runners first and second, one out. Frazier comes to the plate, attempts a bunt. Great Perfect bunt down the first base line. No play to be had anywhere. That was such a good bunt. Yeah, perfect bunt. And here's the bottom of the lineup doing what we've been talking about all evening. Really, the bottom of the lineups for these teams both have been getting the job done. And for Greenup County, they've really set the stage for a possible big inning. Bases loaded, one out with the top of the lineup coming up in Matthew Boggs. Yeah, you know, I talked about in the pregame about the, the struggles that this Greenup County team has had, particularly at this five through nine spots in the lineup. But tonight, I mean, these guys have been on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight out of the possible 12 times the, the bottom four hitters have been on base. When well, they've that, done their job tonight. And when that happens, good things usually result. And yeah. we've seen that tonight. As a quick conversation between Whit and Frazier comes to an end. Very dangerous point of the game for Russell here. They need to get this out and not let Greenup tack on any more runs here. Already a five-run lead. And Matthew Boggs, the senior, hitting 317 on the season. Lead-off hitter for Greenup County at the plate. Frazier taking a little bit too much time for Boggs. Calls time. Corners are in. For Russell, looking to cut the run down in the plate and middle infields at double play depth. Here's the pitch. There's Ooh. a line drive to left field. It's hanging up for the left fielder. Caught. Ball comes in to third. Really nice job by Caden Criswell out there in left field, making that catch and getting in the infield quickly, not allowing him to tag. I was going to say, yeah, unable to move any runners up. So now it's two outs, bases loaded. Big pitch, big out there for Frazier. That was a hard hit ball by Matthew Boggs. Just right to Chriswell, who made the play. That'll bring up this number two hitter, Bradley Atkins. I'm telling you, I wouldn't want to face this guy right now with the bases loaded. Frazier comes plateward. Breaking ball, misses out. Now batting number 23, Bradley Atkins. Frazier looks in for the sign. Uh, corner, corner infield is backed up a bit, as you might expect, with two outs. Here's the pitch. Fast ball. Called strike. Well-placed pitch that time by uh, Jaden Frazier. Just caught the, the black on the outside of the plate. I believe it was Tom Glavin that wrote a book called Living Inside the Black. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Looked like a changeup. Makes a count one ball and two strikes. Yeah, the Atlanta Braves, they had some guys back in the day there who really lived inside the black, didn't they? Tom Glavin and Greg Maddox. <laughs> really knew how to pitch. Who did I say? Glavin? I Glavin. think it was Maddox who actually wrote that book. Oh, ball, all of them were tremendous. And what a Swing strikeout. Swing and a Mitch. That's a way to get out of an inning Big time. for Frazier. Talk about bending and not breaking. Leaving the bases loaded for Greenup County. After Greenup County's fifth at bat, they still lead 8-3 to three on My Town TV. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollock's. Pollock's has been in business for 150 years. My grandfather purchased Pollock's from his niece in 1955. And 69 years later, my family gets to celebrate 150 years in Ashton, Kentucky. And we want to thank you and your families for your support over 150 years. back in Russell we have played five and a half and 
Greenup has jumped out to an eight to three lead on the strength of a five run fourth inning. We thought we may see a few more fireworks the, uh, this last at bat that they had, but Frazier was able to come in. He bent, but did not break. He left the bases loaded. And so now Russell looking to uh, chip into this lead. Yeah, plenty of base runners for both of these teams tonight. Russell has every opportunity to get back into this one. They have three more at bats in this game. Uh, right now, the four, five, and six hitters are coming up. And none other than Jaden Frazier leading things off. As we talked about earlier, you make a good play in the field or get a strikeout, and now it's time for you to bat. Frazier, a 300 hitter, very capable of getting things started uh, on the right foot here for Russell in the fifth inning. And if you're Russell, you're just you're not looking to get all five of these runs at once. It'd be nice. There's a foul tip right into the catcher's chest. Looked like he uh, flexed a little bit like Joe West when he got hit with that foul ball. <laughs> but those are never comfortable. Catcher being a good catcher, walked the ball out there to the pitcher to give the umpire a little time to shake things, get rid of the cobwebs. And he'll start his second pitch. And a swing and a miss. Looked like another changeup. Starting to see a few more off-speed pitches from Gammon than we saw earlier in the game. Well, yeah, Gammon, as we said, had a good inning last inning. So uh, could be finding a rhythm as the game goes on. Definitely pitching with confidence now, putting it in the strike zone. Ground ball is short, fielded by Boggs. But not it. quite, could not quite get there. There's a slow hit ball. Uh, took a few extra bounces, and Boggs was playing pretty far back. He had to come up a long way to that. And I believe you said he's a freshman. He is. Uh, did not quite have the arm strength to get the ball across the diamond in enough time to get the uh, speedy Frazier. So with that, Russell has their first runner on for the inning, and that will bring up Avery Lothar. Here's the pitch. Here's a pop fly ball straight back. The catcher will run out of room, and it will attempt to come inside uh, uh, our little building. Makes the count 0-1. Gammon comes set. Here's the pitch. Off-speed pitch to third baseman, third goes to the second. Logan at two, throw to first, gets away. Runner will end up at second base with the throwing error from Logan. Yeah, well executed first part of the double play there, uh, just uh, the throwing error on the, uh, you know, trying to get the second out and cost green up. End result is one out and a runner on second base. If you're scoring at home, uh, it is a fielder's choice for Frazier. For Lothar. For Lothar. Yeah, yep. yep. Uh, and a uh, five to four put out for Frazier. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. This is Jared Whit at the plate now, junior. He's. Flight out to center field in the first inning and uh, singled in the third. Ball outside. Not much of a lead by Lothar out there, which I can't imagine you would being down five runs if you're Russell. You're just wanting to get people on, get them over. Here's a strike on the outside corner, off-speed pitch. That was a nice pitch by Casey Gammon there, really painted the outside corner with that one. Brings up one and two. Struck him out swinging. Went back to that uh, high heater. He's two down. Now batting, number 25, Kaden Criswell. Criswell will step into the box. 
hoping to figure out a way to get Lothar home. Here's a pitch. Here's a fly ball straight back. And what we have seen from Casey Gammon since Greenup County did establish that 8-3 to three lead, he is throwing a lot more strikes now. He's throwing a lot more strikes, starting to see a few more breaking pitches, a few more uh, swings and misses on those, and then that's opening up the fastball up, which he's gotten a few swings and misses on as well. That pitch there, an outside strike, or outside corner strike, I should yeah. say. Makes it 0-2. Gammon's 0-2 pitch. Fastball up. Looked like a two-seamer. Nice little waist pitch. Changes the eye level of the hitter. Now I'm going to bet he'll come with something off speed here. No, he went back to pickoff move to the second baseman. And we'll reset. Here's the pitch. Here's a foul ball off to the right side. You know, I'm torn on that, you know, if you uh, on setup pitches, because I feel like that was a setup, that two seamer up was a setup pitch. Mm -hmm. And then you turn to second base, it kind of changes the eye level again of the hitter. Here's a, there's that breaking pitch I thought he was setting up. Gammon had taken two steps to the dugout right yeah. there. <laughs> Just a bit outside, I'm guessing. It looked like a pretty good pitch from here. And actually, I think the umpire just tapped his chest saying, my bad. <laughs> I could be wrong. I can't read lips. But here's the 2-2 pitch. Ball outside. Here's the action pitch. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Here we go. Swing, Swing and, a, and miss. a miss. Big one there. Strike three. And Gammon has put up three scoreless innings since giving up three runs in the first two. After five, Greenup County leads eight to three here on My Town TV. Trust is something earned, not given. Better financials lead to a better life. All with the Better Bank headquartered in Boyd County and serving the Tri-State. KFB, the bank you trust and the community you love. Right now, one in four Kentucky high school seniors are dealing with anxiety and depression. That's one in four. It's okay to ask for help and Pathways is listening. Learn more or connect with help today at pathways-ky.org. Well, we've completed five here on the campus of Russell High School in this 63rd district matchup between Greenup County and Russell. Greenup up eight to three on the strength of a five run fourth inning. You know, up to that point, it had been fairly even. And all five of those runs came with two outs. Two outs. If you're, if you're Greenup County, you're looking at, hey, we've got six out to get this district, six outs left to get this district win in. If you're Russell, you're thinking, hey, we've got two at bats to string some stuff together and make some noise. So Frazier's still on the mound. He came out last inning and put up a zero. He's going to try that again with this first pitch, a breaking ball that caught the outside corner, strike one. He faces a dangerous part of the order this inning. Uh, the three, four, and five hitters for the Musketeers. Cohen Underwood has hit the ball hard tonight, every at bat. Frazier stepped off the mound, wasn't comfortable with either the pitch selection or something as he rocks and fires. Check swing, called strike by the umpire. Not sure if it was the swing or the location, but... 
End result is an 0-2 count. Here's the pitch from Frazier. Fast ball up. One ball, two strikes. I was going to say, I was looking out at the scoreboard, and I looked at my left, and we've lost our scoreboard operator. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay, folks. He just left the, uh, left the, left the press box. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Ball outside. Oh, that, that explains it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our scorekeeper has a Dallas Cowboys star on his phone case. So a Dallas fan, that explains it all. <laughs> <laughs> Counts 2-2. Two, two. Here's the pitch. Ball up. Again, we see another uh, pitcher going, oh, two. get yeah, ahead yeah, yeah. with two strikes and then can't find the zone after that or not able to. Well, we move to a full count. Here we go. Strike three called. Nice pitch by Frazier. It was. It's caught that outside corner again. Big strikeout. So that'll bring up Colin Alexander. Now batting number 10, Colin Alexander. Alexander went yard his first at bat. He also doubled to the wall his last at bat. Here's the pitch. Here's a fly ball straight back, I believe. I don't see it, and no players are moving. <laughs> yeah, Alexander, he seems to be seeing the ball well right now out of the pitcher's hands and uh, putting some aggressive swings on these pitches. The wind has essentially stopped. Here's a pitch got away with a little chuckle from Frazier. <laughs> And he gets a new ball. Maybe he just didn't like that ball. 1-1 one, one count. That's one way to get rid of it. Just chuck <laughs> it. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. Beautiful breaking ball. That had a lot of movement on it. Sure was. I might throw that again. Here's the pitch. Here's a line drive to the right center field gap. It's going to be cut off by the right fielder, Mitchell. Mitchell will get it in quickly to keep uh, Alexander. Alan Alexander, man. Three, to a three for four today. Been a tough out. Yeah, he's one away from the cycle at this point. <laughs> you know, I won't get a chance at a triple, I wouldn't think, but never know. In this well, game. Russell, never know. I'm sure Russell hopes that he doesn't get that chance because yeah. that would mean they've <laughs> – A lot more people at bat. <laughs> yeah. So, that will bring up Hunter Holbrook. Here's the pitch. Shows bunt. Gets the bunt down. Oh, a third perfect baseline. bunt Great again. bunt. You just can't do Fielded anything with Adams. that. Oh, Adams he throws it into the right away. field. Runners rounding third. They're coming home. Him. And the throw goes into second base. And tagged oh, out Got at the third. runner at third base, but uh, <laughs> what a play. We were both getting excited on <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, lots going on there. So we had a great bunt, had a bunt hit. Yeah, perfect bunt uh, to from To third. Hallbrook. Adams fielded it and threw it away. That, I believe the runner would have been safe anyways. That was such a great bunt. It was. Adams yeah. had to come a long way. I would probably put that as a base hit yeah. and then a three-base error yeah. uh, on the throw. But after all that, the bases are empty now. Nine-three Musketeers. Brings up Gavin Ray, Roy. Gavin Roy's walked a couple times tonight and – Got out his middle at bat, so he's 0 for 1. And if you're scoring at home, uh, Holbrook would have an error. I'm sorry, would be on with a base hit and then would get second on the error on the throw and then would be put out by a 3 2 5 put out on the tag out. 
I don't know how many people are scoring at home, but you're helping them out if they are. <laughs> <laughs> One of the many services. Everybody needs to learn how to score a baseball game anyway. It's, One of the many good... services we <laughs> offer here on My Town TV. It's a good skill to have. <laughs> Two balls and one strike to count. That last pitch, a strike for Frazier. Frazier rocks and fires. Oh, and trips. It looks like his cleat got caught on the pitching rubber. That counts as a balk. Runner gets first. So Gavin Roy has reached base uh, three times tonight, uh, walked twice, and then got on in the most uh, unexpected way there. I've never known something like that to cause a runner to go to first. Maybe I know a lot of times it's a ball. In softball, that'd be called an illegal pitch. Runners on base used to advance on that, but now it's just a ball on the hitter. Um, I'm guessing in baseball that they have now given the batter third first base here's the pitch balls up pretty decent lead out there by Roy I'm not sure how many stolen bases he has but he's got a decent lead out there nobody on the Greenup team really uh, has an eye-popping number of stolen bases this year they don't seem to run a lot he's one of one balls up two and oh when they do run they usually get there they're 13 of 16 on tries overall this year. Pick their spots. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Ball up and in, 3-0. and oh. Yeah, two completely different strategies by these teams on the base paths. You know, Greenup's only tried 16 stolen base attempts this year. Russell, on the other hand, has tried 55. So they like to be aggressive on the base paths. And, you know, we saw that early in the game mm -hmm. when Russell had runners on. They every chance they got, they were on in the ra on the races. Yeah, the bad thing for Russell right now, these last three innings, Casey Gammon seems to have settled into a little bit of a groove, and they may ride him on the the, the rest of the game. Uh, if you're the Musketeers, with the game coming up tomorrow night, another important uh, district game. Right, they're looking. Both of these teams looking to uh, they're going to turn around, play this again tomorrow, this time over in Greenup. Here's the pitch, ball high, and that's ball four. So Ty Logan's aboard. Now batting number 11, Casey Gammon. Once again, we see, we've seen this before, uh, you know, two outs in the inning, and then uh, now the last two hitters have walked. Well, one, one got aboard via the balk, mm -hmm. and, then, and then walk uh, then this one. Well, we're waiting on the uh, conversation happening out here. Uh, we want to, again, remind our watchers, uh, thank you so much. Thank you all for watching us. Again, we do this for the athletes in our area. We do it for the kids. Um, and, again, please visit our sponsors. Uh, they, they, they're the reason we're able to come out here and do this as the meeting breaks up. You know, we got a big night of, uh, or a big, uh, tomorrow night in particular, a big night of uh, My Town TV action. You know, we got Greenup at Russell softball tomorrow night. Then You'll I'll, be there. I'll Boy. be there. Uh, Russell at Greenup baseball. I'll be there with Brian Harris. Uh, Boyd County at Ashland softball and Ashland at Boyd County baseball tomorrow night. So a big night all the way around by a lot of our My Town schools, for a lot of our My Town schools. They have four My Town matchups tomorrow night. Frazier looks at the runner at second, comes plateward, and misses on the outside corner. 1-0. And, oh. and we know we have much the same thing on Thursday night this week as Boyd County visits Greenup in softball and baseball, same night. So Boyd County coming to Greenup on Thursday night. Pickoff throw to second. A good throw might have had him. That was almost a great play. Another big rivalry game you'll see Thursday night is Russell heading to Ashland for baseball. That'll be a good one as well. Yes, it will. A couple of maroon teams. Yeah. You know, I work in the Boyd County school system, and 
We always called the maroon the uh, the dirty red. <laughs> Two on, two out. One, one count. Casey Gammon like to help himself here. Tack on some more insurance. Gammon fouls it off to the right. Makes count one and two. Of course, Frazier hoping to lock him down, give his team another chance to score. Got to score six to keep the game going. Here's the pitch. Ball in the dirt, gets past the catcher. Both runners will advance 90 feet. And now it's second and third. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Well, now Casey Gammon really has a chance to help himself here with two runners uh, out there in scoring position. He can uh, blow open this game pretty much. With a base hit. Crazy twos. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two runners on. Frazier comes to the plate. Ball in the dirt. Ball squirts away from the catcher, but not far enough for anybody to advance. Full count here to Gammon. Uh, pitcher go right at him, or is he careful here with Gage Lamarck on deck? Well, if you first base open pitch to get to Lamarck, then you're opening up the top of the lineup next at bat, if not more. There's a little flare to the first baseman caught over his shoulder. Nice play by the first baseman, Maybe. Lothar. And with that, only they limit the. Uh, Russell limits the damage to just one run. So after six and a half, Greenup leads nine to three here on My Town TV. Ashley Credit Union is pleased to announce the opening of two new locations. The ACU Cannonsburg Branch is located across from Camp Landing on US 60. The Russell Branch of ACU is located at 1200 Dietrich Boulevard. Visit Ashland Credit Union today to learn how you can achieve more in 2024. From hand-cut steaks to fall off the bone ribs, Texas Roadhouse has something for everyone. Visit TexasRoadhouse.com or download the Texas Roadhouse mobile app to get on the wait list or place a to-go order online. Fresh baked bread and honey cinnamon butter await at Texas Roadhouse. Order their legendary catering for your next event. Located at 501 Winchester Avenue across from Ashland Town Center Mall, Texas Roadhouse will help you support your local school. Struggling with addiction or know someone who is? MyTown TV is here to help. Scan the QR code on the screen or go to MyTownTVCares.com for links and contact information for local resources dedicated to addiction recovery. You're not alone. Reach out today. Well, we've played five and a half innings up to this point. Greenup County has a 9-3 lead over Russell. We've got a couple defensive changes for Greenup County. Boggs. And Luke Boggs, a freshman, comes in to pitch here in the bottom of the sixth. He has an earned run average of 5.88. He has struck out six over eight innings pitch this year for Greenup County. So Luke Boggs on the mound. And Gammon, who was pitching, has gone moved to shortstop. So just a position switch. Again, for those of you scoring at home, there is no changes to the batting order. Yeah, really overall, I mean, he labored through his uh, outing tonight, but Casey Gammon put up a pretty good outing for the Musketeers tonight after those first couple innings, you know, holding Russell to three runs. Yeah, it was the proverbial, and we've said it multiple times on here, but he bent but did not break. Yeah. Um, was, there's a lot of activity on the base paths, but in the – Third, fourth, and fifth innings, he has not allowed. He did not allow a run and is turning it over to Boggs. Boggs comes with a first pitch strike. I'm sorry, a ball. Left the ball up uh, to Parker Mitchell, the center fielder, yeah, number it's yeah, it's, number eight hitter. Uh, it's really up to yeah, it's a number eight hitter here. Up to the Mitchells at number 
eight and nine. He swings through that one, but it's up to them to get on base. You really wanted them to get on base here if you're Russell so you can turn that order over to the top half of the lineup, those first four hitters, all 300 and above hitters. Which the first part of the game, that's exactly what happened, and that led to the scoring for Russell. Here's a swing and a miss. Yeah, you're right. Second inning, Parker Mitchell walked, and then Caden Mitchell came up and doubled and uh, you know, moved him on. One ball, two strike count. And here's the pitch. Ball up. 2-2. Two -two. Bog starts his windup and comes plateward. Is unable to catch the outside corner. And it was mightily close. Makes the count full. You got to wonder if you're a gammon, you might get that pitch because you've kind of lived out there for most of the game. You know, new pitcher in the umpire's eyes, a little bit different mechanics. He sees the ball just a hair different. Bog starts his windup, comes, here's the plate, and he strikes out swinging. That's the first strikeout for Boggs. And that'll bring up Caden Mitchell. As we said, Luke Boggs, you know, coming in here to uh, try to save this game for Greenup tonight. Uh, that's his seventh strikeout of the season, so he's not really uh, known for his strikeouts, but uh, he gets one there. Boggs comes to the plate. Foul back, 0-1. Third baseman's playing up. Possibly expecting a possible bunt. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball outside, 1-1. One and one. Well, we've seen tonight so far Caden Mitchell. He has good speed, it looks like, on the base path. So uh, may not be a bad decision here to let him try to get on with a bunt. If he could lay one down like a couple, we've seen Green up lay down tonight perfectly down the third base line. There's a rip to right left field caught in the air by Holbrook. Nice catch. And that's two down, and that'll bring up top of the lineup, Kyle Mokas. I'm not mistaken. I think my eyes didn't fail me there when the left fielder turned around. They have Carter Ratcliffe out there in left field now. The senior, they've left him in the game. Or they put him in the game, I believe, this inning. <laughs> yeah. I did not catch that before the inning. I just caught it when he turned around and was walking back after saw he made the, the catch. <laughs> saw the number. We'll see where he's hitting next, yeah. next at bat. Here's the pitch from Boggs. Here's a ground ball to third base. Off the third base. Are you to kidding the shortstop me? And not no. quite in time. <laughs> okay. The shortstop throws it away. The ball bounces around yeah. a little bit and then is able to be corralled by the, I believe that's, the second baseman. Yeah, so Mocus is on board there. I thought now that ball sprung exactly to Casey Gammon, and I thought we were going to see a throw out there like a, uh, a this week in baseball uh, bloopers type play. <laughs> bloopers, or if you're Greenup County, that's a Sports Center highlight. Yeah, would have yeah, been awful it close. Would have been, yeah. <laughs> and, but that will bring up. Hankins. Hankins. Yeah, Russell needs to make hay right here with their, uh, you know, the, uh, it's unfortunate for them, two, uh, two outs already in the inning, you know, with the, uh, you know, getting Mocus on. But at the same time, Greenup's big inning started with two outs. It did. You never can tell what can happen. Uh, Especially with a freshman pitcher. Yep. Ball outside, one and one. Nice little lead out at first. You don't expect too much being down six runs. I think I mentioned that last inning. You know, Russell's just trying to get traffic on the bases and then let whatever happens, happens. You're right. Russell usually very aggressive on the base paths, as we pointed out, but now's not the time. 
Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. Boggs looks in for the sign. Takes a gander over at first. Comes set. And runner goes. Swing and a miss. The stolen base or the runner going is for naught as the third out is made via the strikeout. No runs on one hit. Yeah, we could call that a well, hit, I believe. I believe. It, was it was a hit. hard yeah, hit ball. <laughs> and no air. Well, one no, no airs because he no, didn't no advance. No. So after six, the score is green up three. Russell, no, green up nine. Russell three here on My Town TV. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollux. Pollux has been in business for 150 years. My grandfather purchased Pollux from his niece in 1955. And 69 years later, my family gets to celebrate 150 years in Ashton, Kentucky. And we want to thank you and your families for your support over 150 years. It is the top of the seventh inning here in Russell, where the Greenham County Musketeers have a nine to three lead and are coming up to bat. We have a, another new pitcher for Russell, Keone Enchetta. He's a sophomore. He uh, looks like he's thrown four pitches this season, according to the uh, KHSAA website. Uh, I'm sure he's hoping to only throw four pitches this inning because that would mean that Russell gets out of the inning unscathed for their last at bat. Keone and Chetta. Jaden Frazier moves over to first base, I believe. And Avery Lother may have come out of the game. As everybody else looks to be the same out there for Russell. Look forward to seeing Keone and Chetta's fifth pitch of the season here against <laughs> Gage Lamarck. Now batting number six, Gage Lamarck. Like I say, I've been complimentary of Gage Lamarck because I saw him play one good game earlier this season. He looked uh, impressive. Uh, he has he did single in his last at bat, was hit by a pitch tonight, and grounded out to shortstop once. Lamarck. Swings and misses at Enchetta's first pitch. So his fifth pitch is a strike. <laughs> it is. It is. Here he comes, plate word again. His sixth pitch is a strike. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Enchetta works from the windup or from the uh, stretch. He does not work from the windup. And here it comes. And he hits and it. a uh, hit yeah. by pitch. Looked like a breaking ball that did not break. So Lamarck will end up at first, and that will bring up the top of the lineup, Matthew Boggs. Yeah, and Chetta looked pretty good right there, and that really that pitch wasn't all that bad. Gage Lamarck just willing to stand in there and take the take the hit uh, for the team, and uh, get on down to first base. Second time tonight he's been hit by a pitch. Well, these green up hitters uh, tend to crowd the plate, it looks like. Boggs is right on top of that in that inside line. Here's the pitch from Enchanta showing bunt and fouled it off. Interesting uh, play there. Although Greenup County has really put on a bunting clinic. And again, as an old softball guy, I love to see it. 
They have. They've laid down some nice bunts to, to, from the Casey Gammon bunt right down the first baseline where he got the hit. Uh, and a couple have been laid down down the third baseline just perfectly placed that you just can't do anything about. Here's another attempted bunt. This time the pitch was up and in, and he pulled the, belt, pulled the bat back. Makes a count one and one. Bog steps in, and Chetta looks at Lamarck at first. Now comes to the plate. Another bunny attempt. Bun it up into the air, and it's in no man's land. Second baseman's able to field it, throw on to the shortstop to get the force out. Uh, maybe that was a broadcaster's uh, uh, curse again. We just got done talking about how well they've bunted. And <laughs> poor Boggs. Bunts yeah. it up into the air. Yeah, Lamarck was just in no man's land there, uh, not knowing whether they were going to catch it or not, so he had to stay near first base, couldn't just take off on contact. That'll bring up Bradley Atkins, the catcher. Here's the pitch. Ball inside. Bradley Atkins is one for three on the night with a uh, double in the fourth inning. Run scored. Struck out his last at bat. Here's Enchetta's pitch. Looks like a breaking ball may have got away from him a little bit. 2-0. Oh. Boggs is looking on first like he's wanting to go. Here's the pitch from Enchetta. And runner does go. Swing and a miss. Throw down to second. Not in time. Runner stays on the bag. And that is a stolen base for Boggs. You saw that one coming, Nathan. You just had the look. <laughs> Maybe you've coached before or something. <laughs> <laughs> a few games here or there. <laughs> so with a runner on second, two balls, one strike, one out on the number two hitter, Atkins, looking to do some more damage to Russell. Here's the pitch. Did not catch the outside corner for a three and one count outside. Well, Greenup's got Russell where they want him again with Matthew Boggs out on second and then Bradley Atkins and Cohen Underwood and Colin Alexander, the big hitting Colin Alexander. Coming to plate, coming to the plate here. Chata brings the pitch, swings right through it, makes it a full count. And Chata's looked pretty good. He does. I was just thinking that uh, for a sophomore here, Keone and Chetta coming on and looking uh, like he's got some uh, good future ahead of him. Here's the pitch, a fly ball to the right side. First baseman has it in foul territory and makes the catch. The runner at second stays put, and there are two outs. Jaden Frazier over there that time making the catch for the Devils. Now He'll be up to Cohen Underwood now if uh, Greenup County is going to tack on anything else before Russell's final chance. Two outs in the inning. Keone Inchetta comes set. And Plateward. Ball runner goes to third. And no throw. Boggs got a great break there. He did. Oh. Yeah, stole that one on the pitcher, I really. Was just say, Inchetta, I don't think, checked him. And when you don't check that runner, they're going to keep edging out there. So another run 90 feet away, and Chet is going to try and keep that from happening. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Foul tip. 1-1. One, one. I think Cohen Underwood wanted to send that one to the tennis courts over there. I believe you're right. And Chet is still looking for the sign. Now he's got it and comes set. Off-speed pitch inside. Two and one. 
There's a runner on third base. Inchada has seemed to have slowed down a bit. Seemed to be working pretty quick earlier, and once that runner got to second, the third, he's really slowed his uh, sequence up a bit. Here's the pitch. Ball is up. Three and one. I would think, really, if you're Anchetta here, you want to come right at Cohen Underwood. No offense to Underwood, but the way Colin Alexander's been hitting, I don't know if I want to face him again. You know, we, we said that earlier. If Alexander gets up again, then some bad things have happened for Russell. <laughs> and he's on deck. Here's the pitch. Here's a fly ball to right field, right center field. Right fielder has a beat on it and makes the catch. So that'll end the inning for Greenup. No runs on one or two hits. No hits. No hits. No, nope, just had to hit back. No errors. Yep. And this will be Russell's last at bat if they cannot score six here on My Town TV. Trust is something earned, not given. Better financials lead to a better life. All with the Better Bank headquartered in Boyd County and serving the Tri-State. KFB, the bank you trust and the community you love. Right now, one in four Kentucky high school seniors are dealing with anxiety and depression. That's one in four. It's okay to ask for help and Pathways is listening. Learn more or connect with help today at pathways-ky.org. Russell has some work to do, and this their last at bat, down nine to three. They're gonna have to do it against Luke Boggs, the freshman pitcher for Greenup County, who entered the game the last inning and uh, did a good job uh, navigating the number one and two hitters for Russell and uh, you know, getting out of the inning with uh, no run scored. Have a few baseball updates of some area games. Round County defeated Bath County six to one. Now batting number two. Um, and it's really the only one that's gone final, other than the West Carter game, who defeated a team out of West Virginia sixteen to one or something like that. Here's the pitch from Boggs. Catches the outside corner for a strike on Adkins. Adams. I'm sorry, Adams. Yeah, Nick Adams at the plate here. Uh, he's one for three on the evening. Pass ball up, one and one. He singled way back in the first inning and, and fly it out and uh, grounded out to the third baseman last time. Swing and a miss, one and two. Foul tip. Catcher unable to hang on to that. It sounded like it hit the catcher's mitt. Yeah, I thought he might hang on to that when that was my initial thought as well. And I didn't see the ball pop out, but it must have hit the ground. One ball, two strikes. Pitch from box. Outside. Looks like he hung on to that breaking ball just a bit too long. Evens a count at 2-2. Two -two. Green up leading nine to three on the strength of a five run fourth inning. Here's the pitch from Boggs. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. I'll tell you what, this freshman, Luke Boggs, has come in and uh, fanned three hitters so far in his uh, brief stint. That'll bring up number three, Jaden Frazier, the cleanup hitter. Looking to get something going for the Russell Red Devils. This is one of those things where, you know, the future's bright for both of these teams. But, you know, Greenup County in particular, a lot of young players. And this freshman on the mound closing this one out has looked pretty impressive. There's a foul straight back. Makes a count 0-1. Oh, 
Frazier is not happy with himself. I think he would like another hack at that pitch. I got to do a game earlier this year. Uh, another swing and a miss. Where Greenup County uh, beat Fleming County. A, 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 an eighth grader named Kyler Robinson pitched, and uh, he really had a whale of a game. And uh, they told me after the game he was a relative of Don Gullett. So I thought, well, you know, it's good lineage to come from. Well, yeah. I believe <laughs> Kyler's uh, dad. Strike three. Once strike again. three. Yeah, Luke I believe. fourth strikeout. You know, I had mentioned I coached at Fleming County for 10 years. I believe Kyler's dad is from this area. Uh, okay. Last name is Robinson. Yeah. Now Manny, number 11, Avery Lother. Or maybe his mom. Russell's down to their last chance here, Nathan. Bring up Avery Lother. Uh, if he wasn't in the field, he is re-entered at least for the this at bat. He's one for three on the evening as well. And here's the pitch. Ball outside. Two and oh. You know, if you're Lothar, you're just looking to get on any way you can. Just move it on down the line. Here's the pitch. Here's a fly ball to center field. Center fielder looks like he got it, and he After does. Bogs. And that's the ball game. Your final score, Greenup County 9. Or is that 8? 9. Greenup County 9. Russell 3. We'll be right back here on My Town TV. Ashland Credit Union is pleased to announce the opening of two new locations. The ACU Cannonsburg Branch is located across from Camp Landing on US 60. The Russell Branch of ACU is located at 1200 Dietrich Boulevard. Visit Ashland Credit Union today to learn how you can achieve more in 2024. Whether it happens without warning or you're able to plan ahead, when it comes to your heart, you want the very best care. Advice you can trust. Advanced technology to understand, to be heard, to have a say. Professionals who have the knowledge and experience to get it right. Excellent care that's nationally recognized. You want the heart experts at King's Daughters. Because when it comes to your heart, we have exactly what it wants. Right now, one in six Kentucky sixth graders are dealing with anxiety and depression. That's one in six. It's never too early to get your child help and Pathways is listening. Learn more or connect with help today at pathways-ky.org. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollux. Pollux has been in business for 150 years. My grandfather purchased Pollux from his niece in 1955. And 69 years later, my family gets to celebrate 150 years in Ashton, Kentucky. And we want to thank you and your families for your support over 150 years. Welcome back to Russell High School, where Greenup County has defeated Russell 9-3. You know, starting out, the game seemed pretty even. It was 3-3 three three after three innings. Uh, Russell picking up two in the bottom of the first. Greenup picking up three in the top of the second. And then Russell scoring one in the third. Neither team scored in the fourth. And then the big inning came, which really ended up being the uh, – the deciding inning where Greenup County scored five runs, including a home run by Nick, no, by Colin Alexander. Colin Alexander. Yeah. Uh, and that was pretty much it uh, for the scoring. There was one more run was scored by Greenup in the 
uh, top of the sixth for the final score of 9-3. to three. Ryan, you got some stats for me? Yeah, going down the stats tonight. First for Russell, uh, Kyle Mokas led the hitting tonight. Two for four for him. Elijah Hankins was one for three. Nick Adams, one for three. Jaden Frazier, one for four. Avery Lothar, one for four. Jared Witt, one for three. Caden Criswell, one for three. Parker Mitchell, 0 for two. And Caden Mitchell, one for three. For the Greenup County Musketeers, um, a good thing for them, as we talked about, that, that lower half of the order, they needed to come through. Every single uh, hitter got on base tonight. So that was a big deal for Greenup County, getting everybody on base. Absolutely. Uh, you know, anytime you can do that, it's, it's going to be a good night. Uh, Matthew Boggs leading off. Uh, he was uh, 0 for 3, but he, uh, he got on <laughs> by a hit by pitch, uh, an error. You know, he got on in a variety of ways, scored a run. Bradley Adkins was 1 for 4. Cohen Underwood, 1 for 5. That goes to show you there, you know, the number two and three hitters for the Musketeers were two for nine tonight. But it was these guys who came through. The big hitter of the night, of course, would be Colin Alexander. Three for four with the single, the double, and the home run, the blast over the right field wall. Hunter Holbrook was two for four. Gavin Roy, one for three. Ty Logan, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, Gavin Roy was one for one, actually. He, uh, or oh for one. He, he, he walked three times. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he got on base all these times, but he, you know, they were all walks. Ty Logan was one for three. And then Casey Gammon, two for three with a nice bunt as well down the first base line. And Gage Lamarck was one for two and got on base uh, all the times, so though. He got uh, hit by a uh, pitch twice. So, uh, you know, the Musketeers come up with a big win here tonight, nine to three. Casey Gammon, of course, gets the win on the mound, going five strong innings. And Luke Boggs comes in to close it out nicely, striking out four of the six hitters, uh, well, four of the seven hitters he faced. All right, with that, we'll take one more break for our sponsors, and then we'll be right back here on My Town TV. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, or a late night snack on the way home, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Free bread. Refuel. Kentucky. Buckle up and put the phone down. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. Final score tonight in Russell, where Greenup has defeated Russell nine to three in a the I believe it's the sixty uh, it's for the first time playing each other in the sixty third district, mm -hmm. and they will come back and do it all over again tomorrow night. Yeah, we'll have that for you on My Town TV. So please join us again. And if you don't like baseball, or, or you can watch them all, you know, on uh, you know after they've already been. If you'd like to see a live one, uh, you know, a, a softball game tomorrow night, you'll have a softball game. Tomorrow I'll night. have the softball game. Yes, I and, it, and what should be a really good softball game. Greenup County and Russell are two of the top teams in the region, to be honest, this year. Yeah, both have looked really good. Both have had, have really good wins on the season. Yeah, and so it should be a great game. Obviously, if you uh, can. 
We want you to come to the ball games. These kids, yeah. they deserve for you to see them in person. However, if you cannot make it, if you have plans, if you can't get out, if you're in babysitting or whatever, turn us on. Or maybe if you uh, uh, are busy and maybe want to watch it later, yeah, go back yeah. in and watch yeah. it. These kids deserve to be or seen. Or if you come to the game want to watch it later, see some highlights and, or, or hear some insightful commentary. Uh, <laughs> something like that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'll have a partner, so you won't get that from, oh, okay. the, uh, from the softball game. But uh, either way, uh, we appreciate, yeah. appreciate you all watching out. Uh, for Ryan Parker, I am Coach Nathan River, and we will see you next time here on My Town TV.